if yeah. somebody's up here all the time periodically or on the weekends like here this weather this weekend it's supposed to get windy friday night into saturday oh yeah so not saying it's going to fall over but there's a you know there's an issue with this one because the trees yeah basically dead now i don't think if it just died six months ago it's not going to go anywhere within probably the next six months or so but i wouldn't let it go two years thinking it's going to still be standing here yeah. and then yeah. six months down the road you got your car here and all of a sudden the windstorm comes up blows the top out and it lands on top of the car yeah and i mean at that point you're out of car or you got to repair a car but well we god forbid well, if you got somebody running around here playing and it falls on somebody yeah. we did have a tornado that came through and yeah you'll see that a lot knocked of down damage. 50 pine it touched down around there. approximately okay. yeah and Last two of April. them came down on the house yeah it was probably 15 came down in the lake on the other side so the wind came through came this across way. And, and that's typically how our storms are around this area our winds come from northwest or southwest from that standpoint so what about like these maples see how badly that looks at the bottom and then these two trees here have similar issues are those that yard changer. And, that's what that yard changer what's that somebody ran into on the mower that oh right here God. yeah that's just somebody right hit that with a, the mower probably about 10 years ago wow. huh? yeah i could have been 5 10 15 years ago i mean oh. and that's the one thing a lot of times i tell landowners it's like if you want to mow around trees that's fun you're better off to put a small Circle mulch around patch it. around it yeah, yeah, that yeah. way you're running the mower deck out around the edge of the mulch not right up against the so wall. he'll still live like that then yeah Basically, okay. she's trying to heal it. You can kind of see the wood here and the wood here. Over. She's yeah. trying to come out and around to cover that defect up. Okay. And eventually she will, but that defect will always be there in that part of that tree. That's huh. probably what happened to those then. So that car may have hit it because it's so far up or something. Yeah, it depends. Some mm -hmm. of it, it all well, depends. It grew up, I've so. seen them where yeah. people have cleared lots to build and they've dropped trees into other trees around and then they left some of those. And at that point, you're better off to drop them because because the cabin or the house isn't on the lot, yeah. you can drop a tree a whole lot easier versus, okay, now I got a cabin or a house. Yeah. I can't yeah. drop this big tree. I got to bring somebody in professional to take it down. Right. Yep. But that, that's common yard well, I call it yard cancer, but it's machinery damage. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's lichen. This, this blue gray, oh, yeah. that's lichen. It's basically an organism that you see as the tree to get up vertical work and get into the light a little bit oh, okay. it doesn't hurt the tree it just stays on the outside of the bark but mm -hmm. normally you'll see that on trees you'll see it sometimes on rocks mm -hmm. like granite yeah. outcroppings it'll get on granite okay Not from that standpoint. but you guys know the trail system if, if, yeah, or are we waiting on somebody you want to take the yeah we can ride around on we that. can ride that yeah, or because then we can stop and then yep. my brother's gonna Come out and just push it in for a little bit. He's kind of way. Can you put that over there? Yeah, that almost looks Please. like a tree or something fell in there. Because it's on this side, this one, on that side, that one. Oh, that's interesting. So it almost looks like something came down in, right, the, right in the middle. Or that spider might have, like, <laughs> chewed on it. <laughs> Here, I'll sit in back. There's been a ton in here that we've taken out already, but yeah, you can pull the barks off. Is that how much is attributed to the, the pine beetle? You think? Well, I mean, this is just basically age. They're at the age where they start to fall apart because I mean, here again, go back however long ago these things were planted. You can kind of see how close they are together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's your row. There's your row. So that's what less six foot. Yeah. So and then you got. 10 foot in between the rows so it's a little 
In most plantings, the closer they are, the sooner you need to do some thinning. Mm -hmm. But red pine, whatever reason, they never thin them. And then, like I said, once they grow together and start competing, they all start fighting with each other. And all of a sudden, then it's like the red, for whatever reason, now white pine will respond. You can take a third of them out. The ones you leave will take off and start growing again. Yeah. These guys won't do that. We've got red pine clocks down at Mohican that we're losing five, six acres of them at a time. They're just dying off because we have not thinned them. Oh. I mean, they were planted in the 50s, 60s. Yeah. They were thinned one time, and then they had some controversy on logging down there, and they stopped logging. And so they didn't thin anything since the 80s. Wow. And now all these pines are, there's an acre or two here that's dying, or an acre or two over here on this side that's dying. Wow. And it's the red pine we're losing. So, We've got a little bit of scotch pine in the stand, but most of ours are white down yeah. in Mohican. So what do you think? Would, uh, do we bother thinning this stuff? Well, at this point, you can kind of see they're not going to... When you look at a tree that size, most of those crowns should be double that size. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and that's the factory up there. Or that's the food production. And pines will not... Now, they'll continue to grow tall and spread out lengthwise from what's still alive up there. But all those little stubs that are coming down below the, the evergreen part of the tree, all those are just dead branches. They'll never put out new branches down below that. Right. So at this stage of the game, they're pretty much the point where they're at. It should have probably been thin 25, 30 years ago. How much more to life do you think these things have? Uh, they've got another probably 10 years, 15 years without too much trouble. The biggest thing is with these, I wouldn't manage them from the standpoint of like a timber management I'd manage them more from the standpoint of okay there's a dead one I got to get it out of here yeah okay there's one that doesn't have but three feet of crown on top still green I'm getting him out of here oh, okay. from that standpoint and the ones that are still growing that are up there that's got the crown yeah those are the ones I try to favor but I don't think I would just cut come in and cut around them just to get rid of them because it's your front yard basically I mean yeah. it's your play area yeah I mean, if this was a true woods that you're managing, you'd yeah. probably come in and take a third of these out, favoring all the big ones. There's, you can either, it's called thinning from below. Everybody that's kind of the same height or below to a set size gets cleared out. You leave the big ones and they continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, or you do more of a true thinning where you look at them. Okay, this one's in good location. I'm gonna take a couple here. This one's in good location, good crown. Take a few more out around that. Mm -hmm. But this is your yard. I w that's why I say I wouldn't do that in this. But, but this wouldn't it be benefit us, though, if we did do that? I well, mean, what it's going to end up doing is since it's your yard, and it's not a problem, but it's going to put more light on the ground, which grass may grow better. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing, it all depends on how much you're willing to cut, and that's the part I don't know at this point. I mean, when we start looking at thinnings, you can go from the extreme of, I don't want to cut a live tree, I just want to cut a dead tree, to, hey, you got to pull it back, you're cutting too many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, landowner yeah. I've got to work with, and someplace we got to fall out in the middle. And like I said, some people will come through here, and well, I just had a conversation yesterday with a landowner. It's an estate settlement. Half the family wants to cut timber, the other half the family doesn't oh, want to yeah, cut timber. Tough. And I'm like, I'm not getting in the middle yeah, of this. Right, 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 you right. guys figure it out and then call me back. I mean, it, well, let's say. I feel like they're living creatures. We don't like them. So, yeah. well, and, but I would say, though, like prolonging life longer, if we were to thin a little bit, could we add another five to 10 years oh, yeah. on the bigger ones? Yeah. And, and that's and where you'd almost, not, you'd almost have to look at them like this one here. When you look at that top, I mean, there's yeah. only. 10 feet of top left even the one that's further back in there there's even less top on that less yeah. top on that and then you look at a few of these big ones over here there's 15 25 20 25 feet of top yeah those are the ones you'd really want to favor now these guys aren't going to do anything to those right, right. but that's kind of what you got to get some kind of a judgment system of okay yeah. there's still a good top on this one he's good location he's not sitting right on the drive getting bothered by the drive and I mean, now that you got blacktop on here that's going to spread the weight a little bit but i mean the one couple of these that are sitting right on the edge of the drive the other thing that plays into that is how much and it probably is not a big deal here but we have more issues with salt on roads with pines mm. evergreens don't like salt so mm. when somebody plants pines along a road 
and then especially mm. like a 83 or mm. 303 wherever there's heavy traffic hmm. and they put a lot of salt on the road you get the salt spray hmm. then all of a sudden you got salt issues with those trees but but so, you'll have to come up with some kind of a strike i call it a strike so strike one you got little hardly any top and strike that and two, that just, your, this one's already standing dead so he's out of this picture already is it doing anything to the other one at this point to to soak any of the, the hardwoods are basically eventually going to get above them and just continue to push them out okay that's what's going to happen uh, i mean the biggest thing is here again how many times is somebody in this general area from the standpoint of a I mean, that one's not that big, but say this one here, if it would happen to tip, it'd probably get caught up in the walnut before it came across the yeah. road. But, but those are the kind of things you're looking at is, okay, wind's coming from this way. The top's pretty looking pretty weird. This one hardly has much of a top at all. There's a dead one. So less of a top means that it's dying basically faster. Smaller the top, less factory it has to make food for itself. Okay, so that foliage is the factory. That's where it's going to photosynthesize, make food for itself. If it doesn't have much of a top, it may be maintaining itself, but it's not growing. Gotcha, gotcha. At that point. So when you look at these ones, like there's that one there, it doesn't have any top on it at all. Yeah. Those would be the first things I would come through and basically knock the ones down that are, are either dead and or next thing to dead and then get your placement. How... Do you got too many trees here? Do you, hey, these need a little bit more thinning. Yeah. I mean, there's one clear over there closer to the canoe rack. I yeah. mean, he's only got about two, three feet top, a top left. Mm. And then so the one but, right beside it has still got a halfway oh, yeah. decent top. So how yeah. much, much are we, how many more years are we buying them if we do take out like a, some of these? I mean, just. Yeah, it's a judgment call. But I mean, if, if, if the ones that still have a decent top have some room, the, the biggest thing there is you're going to have some, you just, they, these guys are going to still be around in another 10 or 20 years. Yeah. I mean, at that point, the ones that have hardly any top, they're going to be dead in the next five years. Okay. If they're not already dead. Wow. Okay. And they're more susceptible too to the beetles. Is that well, right? and that when they don't have much of a top, that's stressing them, which then that basically almost sends out a signal to the boring insects. I'm weak. I'm susceptible. In the boring when I don't have much of a top, it's really well because they're stressed because they're not making enough food for themselves, oh, wow. or they're just barely making enough wow. to maintain themselves. So they'll put out almost kind of some form of a chemical or pheromone yeah. signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm weak, and that's when the boring beetles come into them because it's easier to hit that tree, have less likely to have that pitch and that gum to try mm. to encapsulate. Now you get a good healthy mm. tree. Okay, I, I'm born into that tree. My probability of getting in there and doing something is going to be less because I'm going to get stuck with the pine tar or the pitch. Hmm. Okay, I mean, pitch is so pine tar. Is pitch that... is that sticky stuff when you yeah. cut a pine. Yeah. That's the same thing. Pitch, pine tar, I and mean, the biggest thing is is all the evergreens have it. Um, but the biggest thing is the other thing that you might look at. I mean, like here's a young walnut that's popping up that's kind of crooked and wiggly. I mean, yeah, if yeah. you're wanting to keep these as pine and try to extend their life as long as you can, the hardwoods are competing with them. Oh. So the, when you get into pine management, it's either you allow the hardwoods in and then eventually over time, the hardwoods start to push the pine out. Or, hey, I want it pine, you keep the hardwoods out, oh. discourage them from coming wow. in. Okay, gotcha. Um, real quick while I'm seeing it, see that little bar of soap? Uh, on that tree hanging oh, there, on the yes. tree. Is that a wives' tail? It'll work until they get used to it. The deer, mm -hmm. yeah. See how it's rubbed up against. Yeah. There's a few pine trees that we put. Yeah, in. it'll so work until it they get used to it. Which is maybe a year or two. Well, or I mean, as far as okay, if you're in an area, you're an animal. Okay, all of a sudden you come in an area, it's like, man, that smells different. I don't want to go over there. <laughs> Okay, now yeah. they come back into that area. Oh, Ooh, that yeah. smell didn't bother me last time, so now I'm going to hang out here a little longer. Gotcha. Then they come back in. Wow. Okay, now the smell's there. Okay. I mean, I've had people collect hair from barber shops, beauty beauticians. Wow. I mean, Hello. there's a product out there. Hey, Neil. Hi. Hi. I'm Neil. I'm John. Nice to meet you, John. But, I mean, it, it's all basically, I mean, they make products that you can spray stuff on so they don't chew on it. Uh, or eat it because I mean that's probably there a buck rubbing on it there. Yeah. But um, 
but the bi biggest problem there's a concoction of oh like eggs oh what is it there's a I've got it at the office, but there's a concoction, concoction of eggs. It's yeah. another product that you spray on them, and they don't like it the way it tastes. Hmm. But the problem is, if it rains, it washes it off. Uh -huh. Or two, if it's in growing season, you spray this, and then it sends a new sprout out. The branches extend. You don't spray that. They eat that back to where they don't want to eat you. anymore. I got you. So I, I try to. Yeah. I try to work with Mother Nature as much as I can. Sometimes it's like, okay, what are we doing here? I mean, you're feeding a deer, I mean, reforestation plantings. You're spending money to put trees in a field to try to convert it back to a woods. Well, the deer doesn't know that. They're just like, man, this is something new to eat it's yeah. in my environment. Yeah. So they just work the row and they eat all the trees. And so there have been a few times where we've had to basically get permits to thin the herd, to drop the numbers so we can get the trees started, get mm. them up then stop doing that right. because then once they get up so high wow they're out of their reach so i mean that's kind of, that's kind of the extreme but uh, there's been a couple i've had to do that with is this ivy anything of an issue it just it's okay it's, it's english, english ivy yeah as long as it doesn't get its foliage above the tree's foliage because it's ah. attached to the tree yeah so it's kind of supporting its own weight now, when we get into like the wild grapevine, the wild grapevine doesn't have the ability to attach to the tree. Uh -huh. So it hooks in the tree when it's little and it grows up with the tree as it goes in height. Ah, so all yeah, its we... weight is hanging on that branch that it's hooked ah. around. Okay, so that's uh, why it's a lot harder on the, the trees. Leanne, you had a question over here? Um, I didn't. Well, what about I the... I go in that little trail and start there. Um, well, the magnolia trees. Well, did we have a question about the cutting of it? it, it, it it's it's too it's damaged, but I mean you know. Is there any down at the bottom? Where the board um, like, is? To the left there. There's a split. Oh, that left's down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looks tight right now. As long as it doesn't start running a black ooze. Yeah. Okay. There's called it's called slime flux. And it's a combination of decomposing material of the tree, sap, um, but Slime flux. as long as that seam is tight and pretty much dry, I mean, it, until it fails, I mean, once it fails, then you'll just basically trim that branch off. The only other thing you could do is to lighten the top up a little bit so there's not as much pressure okay. kind of pulling the branch down. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just, I mean, some people will do it, some people won't. I mean, it all depends on how, how. And then we have Japanese knotwood that we're trying yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. That That's our invasive back, question, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it was. Oh, yeah, I guess it was a There's, There's other there. ones over there to the right. Um, anytime we see buckthorn, uh, I pretty much. Yeah. And now we've got this weird thing going on here with this uh, birch. It's like growing above. I guess it wasn't an issue when you looked it up, right? But oh, the roots all above ground. Yeah, like stuff. that. Is that I an issue? Well, it's it's it must not, it's got a little bit of a wet spot. So a lot of times they'll come up because oh, it it's all too wet it's, for... well, it's the amount of oxygen that's in the soil. They want a little bit more oxygen than what they can get because this lays wet. Look, you can but see deer. You can see where a deer, deer's, um, deer's been yeah. rubbing on them. Yep. You know? Yep. And the deer working them. Boy. Yep. They no, they did not do that last year. Yeah. Well, had a buck. More soap. Had a buck in the area, or or they had a buck last year, and now it's oh, feeling frisky. Right. Yep. Yeah, we there. Yeah, there's one. There's oh. a big one this year. Yeah, he's. So we've got um, crown veg growing on there, and this is our 80-year-old or whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> it had leaks all over the place, even off. Like I mean, it's we put thousand pounds of uh, compressed foam. Bed night. In the bed night. Well, the bed, bed night at night first, we that didn't work. So we got this real sophisticated foam. They drilled like 12 holes down in the concrete up, the, up there up okay. and they pumped it in and man it went it's probably like 15 feet on each side and 20 feet out into the water oh, wow. underneath under the ground in here when we bought it. 
Wow. Yeah, we trapped some mink, and we're like, oh. It was like yeah, putting your finger in like the, the... The mink is the one that you probably wouldn't want to trap. Muskrats are the ones you want to keep out. Yeah. Because muskrat's oh. going to tunnel in. The mink is coming in after the muskrat. Right, because the mean, muskrat takes over. Yeah. They'll bore, they'll bore into your dike, and then from there, that's a weakened spot in your dike. So that's why you want to keep the muskrats in check or keep them out of the pond. I think there's still Brown a musk, too, there's right? still a we have brown hog. Here, but I've only seen them maybe twice all summer. We have brown yeah, hogs. Brown too. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Are those worse than muskrats? I mean, as long as they're not digging in the dike, if they're digging in the dike, they got to go. Because basically, same thing with, you really don't want trees on your main dam because as that root system of the tree grows down into the dam, yeah. you cut it off, then that tree rot rots away. That creates a cavity in that in that dam, which can, oh, right. depending on how big it is, can uh, weaken, never thought about that. weaken that never dam. Never thought about that. What about any kind of vegetation? Like, you know, is that going to... Well, the crown vetch is probably about the one that's, if you're not wanting to mow it, I mean, the thistle, I mean, that's technically a herb, herb, herbaceous invasive in Canada. But, I mean, it's just what you, what it is. I mean. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the end. Just yep. We have some monkey skeletons here. <laughs> what do you know about the? Didn't you say, Leanne, you could uh, sell those or eat those or oh, something? Yeah, or? that's what we're going to sell them. That's what Brooke was telling There's us? different people that will look for them for, oh, they say if you put them in your basement, they'll keep spiders out. Yeah. Oh, that's what he said. That's I, what he said. I don't know if it's 100% accurate. Not like we have all these spiders down there that we're concerned about. No, we have more mice more than spiders. Yeah. But that would be, the mice would eat them. <laughs> so from I'd that bring them in. But yeah, these are all heads. It's 50, 60, 70 years, somewhere in there. Old. Burn some ash, I think. So they got all these too. So we've got the yeah. the uh, these are scotch. So the orange is scotch. Now these are white pine here. White pine. Okay. Oh, white. Yeah, that's the one that's losing a third of its needles right now. Yeah. And that's normal. That is very normal. There are five needle. When you look at each fascicle on the pines, we'll have two needle, three needle, five needle fascicles in each little bundle sheet. And white pine is the five needle, and so they'll lose a third of those needles every year. Oh. Um, is there? A, okay. Then the pine cones that they pine drop. Are crazy this year. They're more yeah, prevalent so this got year. Got some of them up there, and some of that is just they do cycle. I mean, it'll cycle from one year to the next, but I mean, depending on what you read and who you believe, some people say the more seed production the harder the winter is going to be oh really did you hear that you missed that oh the more pine cone production the more seed production the more seed production the more the harder the winter is going to be oh, that's what some people say. well i mean yeah, i can believe it it's supposed to be a harder winter like the, we just heard true? today it's not on our property, that one there that's a silver maple oh it is okay. yeah oh. that's a yeah. Christ tree to be honest. i mean it's a native but it grows real fast makes brittle wood you get the wind storm and boom the branch breaks out oh there's a lot of dead wood up in there that it falls out every storm that comes through and you got to pick it up before you can mow yard now no, kind of a no, no, no. No, yellow typically i mean so the pine cones yeah you can see all the pine cones now now yeah. how how well are they going to reproduce based on dropping typically you don't see it too often i mean you'll get some that will come into an area but most of the time, pine, well, thinking of that little pine seed falling on your grass, that seed is not getting in contact with bare mineral soil. Yeah. So as it, if it's in the, the grass, that seed dries out, it loses viability. Mm -hmm. So you probably won't, I mean, every once in a while we'll get a few to regenerate naturally, but most of the time it doesn't work well, that way. Where would the they pine. actually, where would the soil be that would make them more? Well, I mean, what we end up doing is we collect the cones, get the seeds out, and then we plant them in a nursery, uh, grow them into seedlings, and then basically sell seedlings, is how we normally move pine around. Well, we would like to do that. Yeah, Pines aren't uh, native to this area, right? White pine is. Uh, you don't see too much red, pockets here. The scotch pine are not. Red pine, scotch pine are not native. Red is Canadian, scotch is Europe. 
you can go down to like Ashton County. There's some native stands down at Mohican of white pine hemlock stands, but they're on ground like this. The hardwoods just can't get established. Up this area, the ground's so flat. The only reason there's pine here is somebody planted it. If uh, if you if it was native out in the field, the hardwoods would have gotten in around it and pushed it out. Huh. Eventually, got over top of it. Wow. So these are all white so pine. Yeah, this is all for the white pine. So we take the white pine cone, and how soon do we have to grab it after it's Well, fall? the biggest thing is, is you got to get it before it really opens up. And when it dries out, that's when it'll open up. So it's a little bit hard to collect, in all honesty, because a lot of times if you got any squirrels, uh, a lot of times the squirrels will get them before we can. Yeah. From that standpoint. When, it, when we used to collect, I didn't do it, but when they used to collect there at Mohican, they had a seed orchard there. They'd actually shoot the cones off the trees. Is that right? And, wow. Yeah, again, that was back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Huh. Now, you said the soil, there is certain soil that's good for when they drop. Like, like our yard. Well, I mean, the biggest thing good, is, right? is, like right now, if it drops in the grass, it's just not going to reach. Right. So, if you're trying to do it naturally, you would have to scarify that site to scarify expose it? bare, to work it up to basically. Like a hat, like an inch Expose of... bare mineral soil. That way that seed's gonna hit soil instead of hitting grass. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Now we'll, we're gonna experience a bunch of them over here where there's not grass. That, okay. that, 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 honestly, I've been using them for lighter, for tender. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's all your butt thorn. <laughs> yeah. How much do you know? Happen to know about Are you digging through seats? Here? I was flattening because there's these huge ruts. Well, I was I was leveling it. I've got it. Yeah. yeah. We've been treating with uh, car, uh, copper sulfate quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. And we had a fish kill not long ago. No. Um, we think it inverted. We think it had something to do with. It maybe. either turned over or you killed too much vegetation at one time. Yeah because yeah. as the vegetation that you uh, kill starts to rot, that pulls oxygen away from it. Oh, right, right, right. So you have to almost take sections. Okay, I'm gonna treat this area, let it go for a while, go over into another right. area, treat another area. Plus if you pull it away, the sun's gonna invert the... And when, when or, it, yeah, temperature-wise, they'll flip. Yeah. Basically, in the, in the winter to, or in early spring, you'll have cold water low, warm water up, and then some point in the middle of the summer, they'll flip. And when that does that, it affects the fish. Yeah. So there's some white pine in here. If there's all these pine. Yeah, these are all white pine right here. Oh, okay. So these are the pine. Yeah. Pine but if you pick up some of these, they're already open. They're already open to the point of. I mean, there's nothing in them. Oh. They've all oh. dropped their nuts already, or, oh. well, or what Seeds would be the or, seed. I mean, and I'm not even seeing any. should be a little oh, bit so. of a little bulb on the end of it <laughs> but uh, and you can but they've all all you can kind of see where the wing that part of it was on the cone yeah but they're all basically been dropped so we've got some that are still going to drop so we so, can probably no not the white pine what do you white mean? pine by now probably are open the ones that are viable for this year i can't imagine there'd be any that would still be oh, oh it would okay. almost look okay. like they got the pine pitch on the the acorn on the acorn on the the cone. Yeah. When you get them, break them off, or you pick them up, you're going to be sticky. Okay. You do it yeah, with gloves yeah, yeah, or yeah. put rubber right, gloves right. on. But right now. Well, well, didn't we see some cones at the beginning of the driveway? Well, still on the tree. What was well, it? but they're Those open. They just haven't fallen off. Oh. But what oh, they're going to do, oh. basically, like that little wing. I see. As that thing opens up, they fall out, and they basically are like the maple helicopter seeds. Oh. And that's they their wind dispersed. Wow, that is cool. Now we've got pretty bad poison ivy that you see some remnants for sure. But for managing that aspect, of, I mean, how much do, does it suck away from from the tree? Like I don't get too concerned about the 
aspect of poison ivy unless it's in an area where you're going to be a lot and somebody's allergic to it. Now poison yeah. ivy, when it's attached, it's right there's poison ivy going up that tree. Yep. Okay, now where it's like that, I mean it's pulling a little bit of nutrient, a little bit of water, but it's not taking any light because it's not on the above the crown's foliage. Yeah. Now okay. once that gets big oh, enough and it gets oh, up above the oh. crown foliage, yeah, that's then it's taken away. That's good. Now some of them you'll see not so much in the pine but in the walnut, they'll get some size to them, and once they separate from the tree, then they start acting like grapevine because it's just hooked around the branch up here in the mm. top. But as long as they're attached like that, they're kind of helping to support themselves. On they're using the tree to, for support, but they're attached to the tree holding themselves up. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, tree's yeah. not holding them up; they're right, holding right, themselves right. up. And that's why I say grapes can't do that. Wild grapes can't. No, do that. I've been I've been cutting. We are back. I mean, whatever. But I've been cutting them down at the yeah. base. Yeah, you got um, those cut. Yep. So all that will dry out. Eventually, it comes loose, falls out of the tree, or falls off. The tree. Is there a, a certain amount of gap I should like? So so say I just clip it at the bottom. Are you putting anything on the stump of the, or are you just cutting them? I'm just cutting them, but we, you know, we're doing a little bit of the. Because basically what will happen is. They'll just grow back. They're going to grow back. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's not like you got to drench them, but you got to, Roundup's are very effective on it. What's, if you. What's, what is it that we have? We have that uh, really toxic, um, like the most was, toxic stuff you can get. It was the stuff get. to get out of the, the knot without. Um, it's gliophosphate, and then there's another one too. It's used for the sides of red, like they use, like it's pretty it's heavy duty industrial all stuff. You can all vegetation stuff, the red It's like a red okay. tractor. Supply. Well, the biggest thing is, is like if you're cutting that off, all you got to do is coat that little little stub that's coming up from the ground. Gotcha, gotcha. It, so it's not like you're broadcasting everything with yeah. it. Yeah. I've had guys use like a little foam brushes, just have it in a, like a, mm. a coffee can, just dip and it. then blop it on the awesome. cut surface. Uh, put awesome. it in like a little well, only the cut surface the or? cut surface because basically yeah. there are chemicals out there that have what's called penovating oil and it'll go through the bark but most of them they need that cut wound to open the vessels up to get the chemical to go to the root wow very so, cool now we noticed that this died here for some reason and that's your scotch yeah and that's kind of why the, the poison ivy's gotten up it so much because it can get to the light yeah, yeah. yeah, that just died this year. Do we have any idea why that would be? Because I don't just, see any beetle holes. I would say it's age. Age. Wow. I mean, yeah. Scotch just, like I said, they get about 40, 50 years old, and they just struggle. Wow. Okay, there was an ash tree there. Yep. <laughs> we got a lot of ash along here. Leanne, should we go over? Yeah, on? over the fruit part. Okay. Yeah, we, we have apples and little grapes and stuff. Oh yeah, might as well. So somebody else grew these, um, <laughs> but we've been trying to protect them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now those are Norway spruce. Norway spruce. Now, one thing we're trying to do is maintain the privacy and yep. have a very. So Leanne, we're talking about the privacy aspect and what to grow and where to grow it and all that good yeah. stuff. So. But shouldn't some of these be removed to give them more space? Or, I mean, some of these seem like they're really close together. Well, the biggest thing is, is depends on, these all are, are basically Norway, Norway spruce. Okay, they're technically not native, but they grow here fine. When we're doing windbreaks or visual blocks, we normally will re rely on the Norway spruce mm. because they have a tendency to retain their lower branches better than the white pine. Oh. Okay, white pine, once it comes together, those lower branches die off if they're not getting light, and then basically you you're, you lose your visual break or your wind break function. That um, one's got pretty good lower stuff. What's the what's going on out here in the field? Is it eventually going to be... He's, well, he, he's uh, it's part of our CAUV. Door, okay. And he cuts the hay for his animals. We rent, okay. we rent it to him. Yeah. So basically, the, the one thing that you could do, and you're going to fight deer probably, but... Normally, when we have a field that we don't want branches growing over into it, we'll put arborvitae mm. about oh. five feet apart. That's their evergreen year-round. Yeah. The biggest thing is the deer chew on them. Is hard. there anything other than arborvitae? Because 
We've thought about that. Arborvitae. The only reason I say arborvitae is because it, it, well, it grows tall, but it doesn't tall. spread out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where, I mean, like there's some bigger spruce, you can kind of see how wide those branches get eventually. So normally, if we do just a spruce planting for a visual block, we'll do two rows about 12 to 15 feet apart, and then we stagger the row so mm -hmm. they look like they're closer together if you're looking horizontal mm -hmm. so they come together quicker but they still have that 12 to 15 feet because those branches you don't want those branches to come together too soon because then they basically shed those lower branches gotcha okay. so is that, is that good spacing you think you back up? yeah these are a little tight there because they're again you're because i don't have a yeah those are tight right there aren't they? i mean you're looking at basically four feet apart right there now, can we transplant? You can transplant. The biggest thing is, is you're going to want to do it when it's... Oh, I mean, the pine can start growing at 40 degrees or above. They'll put a group of right away. <laughs> but you would still want to do it somewhere like... in the. If you're going to do it this time of year, you'd want to do ball burlap, move it, kind of like stake it so it doesn't blow over in the wind. You're better off probably to do it in January or February because it's still not requiring a lot of moisture, but then come spring, going to basically have more rain, the spring rain, and things like that. But the biggest thing is, a lot of these, if you watch, down in Holmes County, I've seen Amish guys have auctions on these things, and you can buy a little two-foot bald and burlap spruce for six, ten bucks. Oh. I mean, very cheap. I mean, yeah. it's like a surplus, but they're getting rid of them. And hmm. where a lot of times, if I'm doing all this trouble to move them, I mean, if you've got a backhoe or have equipment, it's, you can do them. So I've got a but backhoe. if I'm doing it by hand, it's like, man, it's going to oh, take yeah, me yeah, all day yeah. to dig this thing out. So I've got a backhoe, and how deep and wide do you go? For something this size, I would say you want probably about a four foot ball. Oh, wow. Four foot deep and four foot. Yeah, I wouldn't go four foot deep, but four foot around, probably about two feet deep. Four foot on each side or four foot? Four side? foot total. Two feet on oh. this side, two feet on this side. And then from there, you may not oh, even do the. Feet deep. You may not even do the ball like what they do when they do landscaping, but because if you got your hole dug and ready to go, you basically dig around it, get it to the point where you can pop it, take it right over and put it in the ground. Hmm. So maybe, but they're, I mean, maybe this one would probably be a good one. Yeah, Are like there some programs that'll do like planting some pine? We do have that equip program you can do planting. Now they normally are not set up to use bigger stock. They're more, I mean, you can go to a, a bigger, they're not going to cover like $50 trees. Yeah. I mean, because they're set on a flat rate. They'll pay so much. And if you, if they, if they say they'll pay five bucks for it and you spend 25, you're 20 bucks out of your own pocket, basically, to finish that project. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times you, what ends up happening, I've got landers that have planted trees that are one, two, three years old. And then somebody plants a ball and burlap. There's a field over in Richmond County they did it with. They planted seedlings in it, and then they came in and put a full-size Christmas tree in it. You can't tell the difference which is which. Hmm. The little ones caught the big ones. Huh. Oh, wow. So, but here again, here's your cones that you're kind of talking about. See how they're sealed up? Yeah. yeah. They haven't dried out to open up yet. Oh. But this is spruce cones. And like I said, not saying it can't be done, it's just typically from a landowner standpoint, you just don't see many of them try to do the hardwoods are a lot easier. You can pick up an acorn, plant it, yeah. and basically next spring here comes the the, the oak tree. Um, yeah. Pines are a little bit more finicky because the seed is so little. If you get them too deep, they won't have enough energy to get up out of the ground. Wow. Um, is this one gone? We grew a heck of a yeah, that one's gone. <laughs> How do you know, what, like, if it gets a little bit like that, like maybe even that one, I mean, it's kind of kind of, <coughs> how do you know when it's dead? Well, these have all been rough, this is rough. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like this. Uh, a lot of those, uh, like this one, I mean, you've still got, got some good buds set. So I would just trim the dead out and walk away from them. Trim the dead out, I mean, and then walk away from them. Eventually what's going to happen is, you got a leader here, leader here, leader here, leader here, leader here. Uh -huh. Eventually, once they get up and at that some point, you're going to cut these leaders back and just leave one go. Okay, but it's uh -huh. at this stage you want everybody to try to grow. How high? Uh, 
Uh, somebody will become almost like the dominant leader, oh. and then these others are trying to, and you just take care of Ruth here because of this one. Thinking of a Christmas tree, somebody that's planted a tree for Christmas tree. A tree doesn't grow perfect pyramid typically. They're shearing that thing to shape it, and then that normally that main leader is left alone. And then if they want to thicken it up, they whack the leader off, and then that makes everything else kind of thicken up. So, gotcha. but, but this guy's Depending on how much you want to cut into the field, I mean, you got to keep your 10 acres or more to keep the augers off the path. So if you knock some of this back in or, okay, right here where that's at, you may not plant anything, but if this is cleared out, run a couple rows of spruce in here, maybe a, a single row of white pine mixed in, the white pine will take off and grow and the spruce will kind of sit there for a little while. Once they get their roots reestablished, then they'll start growing. Nothing there good. I mean, it shouldn't be here. I mean, technically, it's not needed. It's just a nice blind in the summer. Yeah. But <laughs> well, and that's why I say, but then as soon as all those leaves drop off, you can see right through it. Yeah. I mean, you still got the brush. Still going to be able to do a little bit of spot spraying. Yeah. 
kid <laughs> dropped his bike behind me and didn't say nothing. And I back over, it's like, well, shit, you're getting a new bike. <laughs> Edible mushrooms, do you have any questions, honey? No, I'm not gonna eat any of these mushrooms. No? No. They're the only one, there's more bad ones this time of year than there are in springtime. Oh, oh really? The springtime ones, the, the morales, those are the easiest ones to tell. Yeah, we never found any of those this spring. Um, the uh, chicken of the woods, that? That one's you're... you'll see around the, the oak trees. But oh. as far as there's other ones out there now, I mean, Angel of Death. Angel it's a common I've name. It's that. a white one. That, yeah. I mean, it's like you eat it in 15 minutes, you're about dead. <laughs> oh my it God. does something to your liver. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow. But there's more bad ones this time of year as far Jesus. as toxic than in the springtime. So anytime I see buckthorn, I should just try and get rid Well, it's going to grow back. Yeah, but. the buckthorn is the main thing that I've worked on around here. Is it, is it doing damage to other... Like, is it taking away from... It's just growing, taking growing space. I mean, yeah, it's taking some nutrients, some water. It's not taking the sunlight because the, the evergreens are above it. Right. Um, the biggest thing with it is it's also, every year it's making so much seed. It's kind of a polluting the site with more seed. Yeah. So a lot of times you'll go after it just as a sanitation, trying to eradicate it so the seed's not there. Right. Well, I'm going to have a hard time calling these... Uh, scotch pine now because like in my mind I've been calling them red pine because I see the red and anyway all right so there's a, an area back in here we made this path we've got apple trees on the right and we've got these wild what kind of grapes are these I think they're just uh River Riverbank or Riverbank. Yeah, these would be what we classify wild grapes. Yeah, they're wild. I mean, they're basically when you do find the grape, they're about the size of your pinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's more seed in them than there is yeah, flesh. Right. Uh, the birds like them and they'll eat them, but uh, but that's the grape that we're mentioning. How it just hooks into the, the plant it's in. It rides up the with the tree, but then all its weight's hanging on that one branch. So mm. if you get a heavy wet snow, ice mm. event. It just rips branches out of the tree or rips the top out of the tree. Yeah, wow. We'll to, well, we've been pulling down. the we've been pulling these vines down, right? Because yeah. trying to what get get to the grapes. Is that why we were doing that? Well, as far as the grapes, you're probably better off just to like this one's cut and hanging. Yeah. You're probably off better off just to cut them and leave them hang. You're going to have to treat the stumps because here again we're getting enough light because we're just a little bit of a fence row kind of a, a woods. Um, because the stumps would sprout back and continue to grow. Now they wouldn't have the ability to hook back in and grow into that tree. Yeah. But they would hook into another small tree coming. I see. And then ride back up or stair step back up in. But, I see. But there's your apple. Yeah, I mean, old, old yeah, apples. Yeah, there's some old apples. Over. You cut that as that. But it gave us apples. Yeah, most and of the time it, it could be an old orchard. Yeah. I mean, 50, yeah. 60, 70 years ago. Sometimes you can cut a lot of the dead old wood out. I mean, as far as this one's a little bit beyond gone, but sometimes you can cut them back a little bit to rejuvenate them, and then some they'll more produce more. The yeah. Too. Yeah. And there's okay. some cherries over there too, but I don't know if I recall cherry seed on them. Which way, honey? Go right. I guess go around. The choke cherries down here. I don't know if they're all dying or what, but cherry had some fungal problems this year on the foliage. The regular wild, the re, I don't think it'll kill them. Uh, it just the the regular wild cherries, they lost started losing their leaves back then, August. Um, yeah. And, so that's uh, normal. Well, it's not normal, but it's it's happened before and not killed them. Put it that way. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that happens every year, but it has happened. Should I take down yeah, some of these ash just so they don't? Smash into other things or just leave them go? I think I'd just 
to leave and go because yeah. it's back here in the back. There's yeah. enough other stuff you got to yeah, put yeah. kind of a priority on. Yep. The ice back here is kind of dead wood for wildlife at this stage. Once they fall over, then it's like, okay, it didn't fall across my path. It's in the middle. I'm leaving it there until I get back here and start working on the buck for them. Then I can push it over into a pile. I'll put it wow. in firewood, whatever. Do we own these trees? Probably, because so. they are grown here. Right? No, I think about this walnut up here of why it's dying is that what you were gonna ask What's happening? there was a walnut dying here oh this walnut doesn't look like it's doing well there's a couple of them that one's still okay but well like the walnuts dying. themselves they're one of the last trees to get their leaves and they're one of the first trees to lose their leaves oh so maybe it's just so it probably just started changing early okay i mean man that one is loaded with walnuts yeah, though yeah it is look at the nuts hanging in it. Do you, do you ever harvest the nuts at all? I don't. There are some guys out there that you can take them to. I don't know exactly what all they do. There was an Amish fellow that contacted me one time was looking to buy them. And I think he was using the, not so much the meat and the husk, but he was getting the oh, the actual seed coat, the hard part of the walnut mm -hmm. for uh, like material to be able to use like sandblasting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. All right, so two questions on here. Um, one is these roots now that we we have this path going here, like they're more and more exposed and we're running them over. Running them over it's more not more. ideal, but you really don't want to bring dirt in and pile it up because it's when you do that, that eliminates oxygen that's in yeah. the soil. A tree uh, that's used to having dirt at a certain point, and then all of a sudden you bring in a foot or two foot of soil over top of it, the tree doesn't like it. it you'll yeah. kill a tree doing that. What about just bringing it up a little bit, though? I mean, filling holes in and things of that, that's not going to hurt anything. But I just wouldn't bring in, oh, I'm going to put another foot or two over top of this. What about, like... Skim a light layer over it wouldn't hurt you at all. How about clay in the holes and then dirt? Mm, you know what I mean? It wouldn't hurt. I mean, from that, that standpoint. Clay the biggest the holes, thing is, the dirt on the, kind I of mean, a, ideally, the trees probably shouldn't have been here, but we're not on a dike. I mean, the biggest thing with a pond, when you have a pond like this, most likely their root system's not going out that way. Mm -hmm. It's going this way. Mm -hmm. Because here again, lack of oxygen under the water, mm -hmm. and certain trees, these are all white pine, they don't like wet feet. Hmm. So all their roots are coming this way. Wow. So now, what, what to do about this? I mean, if there's anything at all, I don't know. Not but, at this but stage, see, see it, Yeah. There's not much you can do about it at all. So there was probably another four or five feet out when they grew it, when they planted them. Could have been, or they put them right on the bank. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, who knows, huh? There are, I don't have them, but they're, the Soil and Water Office here in the in the county used to have old aerial photography, 1950, 1964. Got it. Yeah. And what? they donated them to the library, so they are at the Medina County Library. Oh, wow. So you might be able to stop at the library and ask for them. And it's in a, the book I've got for them, I don't have them for Medina County. Somebody lost them. But my other counties, I've got, they're in a three-bound ring book, and they've got a map inside that where the flight lines were. You find the property on the map, it tells you it's photo 1-66. You look at 1-66. Yeah. And then you can see, okay, did the did this have to be over that way, or was it the trees were planted right on the line? Mm -hmm. um, I can think of one pond down. Well, it's more of a small lake in Ashland County. Yeah, at one time it was five acres, 
and then when they lost the dike in the 69 flood they dropped the dike or dropped the overflow mm -hmm. so now it's only about three acre lake wow but they didn't want to repair the dike since it got washed out with the big flood in 69. when gotcha. they repaired it they put a new one in just lowered it are these trees too close yeah here again this is more aesthetic i mean it's not hurting anything the way they are I hit, I hit the tree. Yeah, I hit it. Is that going to be okay? It'll heal that up. It'll heal that up. Um, but yeah, this is where the, to where the tornado, tornado kind of came through here and then right over through there and a little over there. But uh, yeah. but yeah, we had, oh my God. I, this is still tornado tree stuff that I'm yeah. two years ago. That's where I had the fire last night. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that was there. Or that was out. Yeah, it was, it was up to here. It was like a five feet up in the oh, air. So yeah. I just went ahead and yeah. uh, cut that down. And then, and then there was a couple trees here that came down. And now we got this one. Is this? So here's a good spot here to talk about maybe. Um, well, so this one is not, I mean, just let it fall, right? Is That's what a scotch. Saying? Well, here again, if this is a normal path that you guys take, in or if you have somebody walking around fishing on the pond that'd be one i would probably take out just because it's dead if it's sitting in the back section where people don't go on a regular basis i'd let it run its course and let it yeah. fall down its own but yeah. if it, you you have to almost look into i mean it, and here again i'm just say you made this a dedicated like recreation area little campsite yeah, everybody yeah. comes over here yeah, yeah then yeah, you're in yeah. that site more so then you don't want to have that hazard there. sure okay here again your path is here i mean little jimmy walks this path or whoever <laughs> uh neighbors come over to fish they're always walking this path fishing when they're going around the lake i don't want to have to worry about that thing coming down on somebody so i would probably take it down yeah it's back there it's back there where it's away from everybody then it's doesn't matter if it's there right. or if it comes down but so right here it's too close to i wouldn't be comfortable with it being right here on the water yeah because that's what's drawing everybody everybody's going to come to the right water if it knocks down that birch the poor sweet birch. gums they'll thrive right on the lake like that sweet gums will tolerate the wet ground they're they they're technically not native but we plant them put it that yeah. way and they'll tolerate a heavier wetter soil huh. Huh. yeah there's a lot of little saplings going yeah on. and they will grow Leanne, you were wondering about pruning here. Yeah, I think in the winter when it's ice on the pond, we should cut some of these lower branches off. What do you think? I mean, anything that can shade water is actually technically good for you because it helps with temperature control. Oh, but I this would... little finger is not going to do anything one way or the other. No. <laughs> so, I mean, from the aesthetics, if you see it from that side and you don't want to see the brush down on the water, prune it a little bit it's not going to hurt you it's how would you prune it or what would you do i would just take the branches back to the main tree and uh, oh. from that standpoint so Like I said, it's not going to help you. It's not going to hurt you. So he was saying, I mean, that's the stuff you really kill the algae. Yeah, only do uh, one section at a time. But a lot yeah. of this, this is well, yeah. I think so, what I mean, also happened because we had like him shock the silt pond. Yeah. And then we had the really heavy rain. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. then yeah. ended up pouring into here too. So it got yeah, way yeah. more treatment right. when that happened. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So it's probably that and, the, and it inverting a bit from the bangs. It's like the perfect storm. When you look at the branch, supposedly the um, the pond guy says that he didn't fill everything. He said we probably have you generally have a thousand fish for every acre. Hmm. And I counted about 50 dead fish. And he said, yeah, we've got plenty more, but I don't know. I don't think we've got anything since. Job yeah, but I mean, not a thousand ass for every acre. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Maybe okay. not. Wow. Yeah. Eventually, it'll do this. And then eventually, as it gets bigger, this will even disappear. And it'll be just clean lumber. Man, there's a collar. That you're supposed to not cut that back too far. That, that actually... You don't want to leave a big stub, like cut out here. Right. You want to be back in There's here. There's this where line that you can see that's like a little like oh. indentation. Yeah. Where right behind it is this collar that helps it heal. I mean, even on little and trees. So you want to cut it, not the collar, but the. Yeah. Abrupt, even right like this it. little oh, maple. Oh, okay. You'll see it. Yeah. I mean, that's right cool. That's that line that we're referring to. Oh. So you, cut, you want to cut on this side of that where that line is. Oh, so okay. Don't cut all the way down right. to it. If you cut flush, flush to the tree, you're cutting that collar oh, off. Yeah, yeah. And you're making that wound bigger. Oh, yeah. interesting. So you're cutting just far enough past that collar. I mean, you don't want to be up here and leave a dead stub. Right. Because then the tree's got to grow that much out to cover that wound up. But just leave right there where that little line is. Huh. Okay. So, John, is while I'm thinking about it, is there anything preventative? You've mentioned some stuff, I think, about the pine beetles. Like, is there anything we can do proactively? To save some of these pines because i because we've noticed that it really has done a the, lot of damage well, the biggest well, thing is is it's, it's the overall age of the scotch yeah i mean just in 25 years there's not been i can't think of a single time where we've done something to bring them back mm. i mean it's just they get, we're not bringing them back but to prevent, prevent well it. but i mean the biggest thing is is if you get that dead stuff out mm. that dead stuff is harboring some of that stuff mm. oh. I mean, from the standpoint of could the insect be in there kind of reproducing itself? And then once it stops using that, it goes to another weakened tree. How, how, do, you, how do you know? That's where I'm well, trying to Well, that's what I mean. As far, and that gets back to where we first stopped. I mean, if you're looking at that tree and, okay, he's got 20, 25 foot of top, good, healthy looking tree. Yeah. I'm going to try and help him out if I can. Right. Okay. The tree right beside it's only got about a five to 10 foot top. There's all these dead stubs. Now I'm starting to see holes already in that tree. I'm probably gonna get that guy out of there. And and holes I mean, almost always rep That's the adult bug coming back out. Back out. So the, the beetle's already been in the tree one, yeah. one cycle. And then that's the adult coming out to complete that cycle. And Neil, the bigger holes are the, the woodpecker coming in and eat, eating the larva. Yeah. So the yeah. big, big, big holes. I mean, yeah, and you here again, I'm mean, and once the trees are dead, then they really get the woodpeckers will really start to get after them. If there was green left on that a little bit, does it have a chance still? I mean, sometimes they look like they're still got a chance, but there's times when they're dead they just don't know it. I mean, evergreen is particular. <laughs> if there's just not enough up there to factory up there, they're just not going to. I mean, they could be there a couple more years, but right. they're not going to be there another 50. Now, I thought these birch were dying, but maybe not. One yeah, one of them. They look kind of. Well, we had yeah, a goose. We, we had a goose come in here and lay their eggs, and they've made a dust disrupted something. I don't oh, know. I mean, as far as the one, one, that branch that's going off to the left there, it's got some dead yeah. stuff hanging. Yeah. But I mean, what does that mean? Should we prune birch? it? Or well, we... birch are susceptible to bore. To there birch. is a birch to bore. Oh. Birch bore. Oh, okay. I and mean, it's uh, in the same family as the apple egg.
point in time, somebody's done it, because we've grown river birds. I don't know what part of it is actually the... Somebody cut it off, and these are just sprouts coming off the original stone. Because you got the center circle where the original tree was, and then these are just sprouts coming off the map. Well, I mean, it's just, they're almost, they're clones of the original, because they're just stump sprouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a common thing that happens to trees, but uh, when you get into uh, river birds and white birds and paper birds, I mean, we don't do a whole lot with them typically. Well, I'm just saying what you would watch for is you would see it if it's got I, more in it. You I would normally, it wouldn't be like the, more holes. You know, it would just look like little ribbles. Don't know about and I'm not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it would telegraph yeah. through the park. Yeah. And if we see that, yeah. I think they've got it all. Well, there's some yeah, stuff. Yeah, there. And I don't know right. about the aspect like this one right on the water. What's that? But there are some treatments out there that you can systemically use. You put it around the soil, around the tree, and it's The biggest thing is it depends on how extensive the insect is as far as have they done a lot of chewing in there already because you got to be able to get the chemical to go from the ground all the way to the top to protect that tree yeah. and if they've already done a lot of girdling or a lot of chewing on the yeah. vessel yeah, yeah. they may have cut that ability on say this side of the tree well if we don't see side. any of that in the to, to that for the trees well i mean uh, <laughs> there's a product by bear bear corporation by bear aspirin Get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's called Tree and Scrub Insect Preventer. It's a bottle of that big. And you mix it up based on the size of the caliper of the tree. And then you flood it around the store. Hmm. The biggest problem, like with this one, is I don't think it'll say, I don't think you can use it around the water. Yeah. But the pine that's not on the water, you can probably use it. Yes. And it was one that could be, they did use it a little bit for Emerald Ash 4 because they're again, it's get it in there before the bug starts chewing on the cambium tissue. As it starts chewing on it, it ingests some of that chemical and it kills it before it develops people. And it, but it's just, there are other ways to get it in there. There's there's like, there's somewhere you like drill little holes in the bottom of the tree, you set these tanks down and then they're pressurized. Oh and it looks like IV <laughs> to the tree. So, but a lot of these things are not something that you're gonna just do hundred trees on the property it's like okay here's that one specimen I don't want to lose it oh. I mean well like there for a while I wrote ice for was anywhere from about three hundred to five hundred dollars a tree, tree. Mm. so mm. it's got to be a special tree I'm not mm. going in the back 40 to treat all my eggs because it's just not cost yeah. Yeah. so and that's why I say but that bear product you can pick up a bottle of that for about nineteen twenty dollars twenty five dollars and it all depends on the size of the tree. If yeah. you're doing a tree this big, you're yeah. probably gonna use the whole darn job. Okay. But if you're doing trees this yeah. big, then you're probably gonna get multiple. You need have to, I don't even know how many, it's based on the caliper of the tree. Is it a four inch caliper? I mean, and what that is, four inch tree, six inch tree, eight inch tree, and it'll say mix up 10 gallon, 10 ounces to a five gallon bucket of water, and you flood, basically dump it around the bottom. Yeah. But it, that's the, the probably about the only thing I know of that's over the counter. Do you think, so we've noticed the difference of the two kinds, like getting that out. How much do you think it's age versus the pine beetle going from one to one? I think it's age. I mean, they're tied together, but I think yeah. it's the age of the tree. They're basically kind of like everybody that we get older, we get weaker, we get right. more frail. Yeah. The trees do the same thing. And then once they get a certain spot, they're more susceptible to the bug coming. So you, based on species, Scotch pine, red pine, those are the ones that we've always seen that in. Scotch pine? Scotch pine is the worst one, red pine is the second worst, <laughs> and then it gets into the white and, and the spruce. So you think
think it'll play itself out. Meaning Eventually that, it will. Like the, the old ones right now are, the susceptible ones are getting kind of If you don't do psychic. anything in the next 25 years, most of these will be gone. We don't do anything. You don't no, do but anything but with the pond. But I, like I said, I, I would get rid of all the dead stuff that's dead, and then the stuff that, man, there's just hardly any crown on this tree. Yeah. I'd get rid of that first. Step back a year later, look at it. Okay, this area is still looking like it's declining. Go in and cut a few more of the weakest trees. And then, or hey, this area is not looking bad. I'm going to walk away and give Mother Nature a couple years to see your response. So when you say get rid of it, do you mean actually like, take it out of it? Yeah. I mean, like we stopped over there, there was a half a dozen just dead trees standing in there. Or they had about this much top on a 40 foot tall tree. That just is not enough foliage to make enough food for that tree to keep sustaining itself year after year. And you got to get it out because the beetles. Well, it, it, when you have a tree that's still alive that's stressed, it's sending out signals of, hey, I'm weak, I'm susceptible, come. come easy. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then, you, um, then you put the other one at risk, the good one at risk. Well, once it comes in and hits that and it gets that tree to the point where it's no longer good for the insect, hey, I got to find me a new home. Hey, I got other ones over here. I can go to what, that. What is the proximity that, you know, if it's like six feet versus 30 feet away? Is there, is uh, most of these insects, it doesn't, doesn't, it's, really it doesn't really matter. I mean, thinking of emerald ash borer, emerald ash borer har hardly covered the head of Lincoln on a penny. Okay, but thinking of that insect that can fly up to a half mile, he gets up and all of a sudden a, a gust of wind comes along and that helps him go the next quarter mile to another fence row of trees. And then all of a sudden, hey, I got a girlfriend here, and they do the cycle, and she lays eggs on those trees. And so that's the biggest thing with, especially with emerald ash borer, with it being non-native, our trees weren't used to it. They were just hopscotch, and, and we were helping by moving stuff. I mean, people would move firewood, people would move logs, people would buy landscape stuff. And some of this was before we even knew any problem about it. Mm. One of the finds they had in Columbus was landscape stock that came out of Michigan. A developer down there bought ball and burlap stock from somebody, a, a guy in Michigan, shipped it down to Columbus, planted it in development. And the only reason they found it is their Ohio department, well, their department of ag was going through his record and said, hey, you better go check this. He shipped trees to this spot. So our ODA people went out, Ohio department of ag went out, looked, yep, we got a spot here. And it was nothing more, and it came from those trees up there. And so they cut every one of those down. And that was early in the, in the process. Now it, it's Emerald Ice Forest, clear to Louisiana, clear to Quebec, clear to Colorado. It's past the natural range of that. And the problem that I, the thing that I'm kind of interested in watching is they have documented it going into another tree called a fringe tree. Okay, and when you look at the, the genus, species, all that, the ash tree is part of the olive family. Okay, the fringe tree is part of the olive family. Okay, now if it can get across the mountain range out west and get to California, mm. there's olive trees oh, in California. Yeah. Wow. Okay, could they go into the mm. olive yeah. trees? Mm. That's what I mean. Mm. If it gets into those, then you're going to see more money get thrown at it trying to eradicate mm. it out there because then you're talking agriculture yeah. product that could be a jeopardy. But, but when you were talking about taking out the dead, dead trees, or almost dead trees, do you mean? get the wood out of there? I would get it, basically, I would get it down just like you've done here. Cut it and burn it. Because that way, if the insect's in it, you're killing it when it's burning. Mm -hmm. so. He loves that. Oh, I know, I know. I was, down, <laughs> I was trying to find a way to tell him that he doesn't have to do that. Well, I mean, and here again, I mean, that gets back to the aspect. I mean, I would do that definitely more because it's up here, the aesthetic aspect from the cabin. That's why I say you get way in the back if it's a single pine tree, I'm probably just going to knock it down and just leave it lay there. Because it's going to be either sooner or later, it's not going to be util be able to be utilized by the insect. Yeah. And they'll have to go to something else. Something yeah. Go to find another one up here or whatever. But have you seen any other types of ash so far? I mean, I think we have some other ash, or younger ash. Well, in this area, it's about white the only ash. ones we'll run into are what, there's white ash, white green ash, ash, black ash, and a blue ash. We will not find blue ash. Blue ash is over towards Indiana okay. or up around the lake. It, and, it'll and our, tolerate more calcium. In and our dead ones here are what? Most of these are green and white. Green and white. 
the black is more of what we would call swamp ash. It's got a, it looks a lot like the ash, but the bark is <laughs> peels up more. It, it's got more of a woolly appearance in the bark. Oh, and okay. the black yeah. ash. But you'll yeah. see small ash. I mean those will eventually die. We or? don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't know. Yeah. Now the insect itself is still in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, but it's kind of think of a fire. If a fire burns and then doesn't have something to burn, eventually it burns itself out. Yeah. Emerald ash borer is going to be the same one. Yeah. It needs the tree, it needs the ash tree for reproduction and a food source. Okay, so you're not very good parasite if you kill your host. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you got to keep moving along with the host. I mean, otherwise the fire burns out. Emerald yeah. ash borer is the same one. It came through and killed everything 10, 15 years ago when the population was up here. Okay, now it can't stay up here because we don't have enough ash trees. Right. So it moved. Now the population's down here and there's still some ash trees around. There's little ash trees and that's sustaining a, a few of them. Now will they be enough to kill all? I, I think it's going to come back. I don't know if we'll, you and I won't see trees like this in our lifetime, right. but I think we'll see ash trees like that now I could be wrong but here again it's got to build itself back up one or two insects is not going to kill a tree I mean but you get 500 a thousand tree insects in each tree yeah. as soon as they get around that tree it girdles the tree and it can't move food and water up and down <laughs> so it dies pretty quick ash trees can't move water or food too far in and that's they're chewing on that tissue that the trees move food and water mm -hmm. so once they cut that in when they're in larva form, they cut that. And then the, basically the tree just, and we do the same thing a lot of times when we're trying to get rid of the tree. We'll take a chainsaw, cut about half inch to an inch in. We're trying to kill that tree in place by not allowing it to move food and water up and down. So, but the insects go on a different old path for fruit. Because yeah. you're having an insect here, an insect here, an insect here. I wonder why they don't go to other trees. Well, I'm glad they didn't. Well, yeah, I mean. I mean, from that standpoint, well, when you look at like a cherry tree, when they have a boring insect, they've got that gum, that real sticky gum. That's a defense mechanism to try to keep that boring insect down. Same with pine. Pine is the same but way. They have uh, when you look at your oaks, they have there's chemicals within the oak sap, huh. tannic acids and other chemicals that here again, once they're weakened and stressed, that that drops to how much is in their sap, and then the bug can get in. But green ash, white ash, all that, the moisture content that's in that wood is so low compared to everybody else. You can burn green ash. I mean, I'm saying wet. Like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, ash yeah, was yeah, alive, yeah. I cut yeah, it, yeah. I throw it on the pile, right. and it'll burn. Right. I mean, so, but, but it, most other woods will just uh, sit there and smolder because there's so much moisture. In joints. So the, the ash tree itself doesn't have a defense mechanism to keep that boring insect out. It just didn't have to. Our, our native, our red-headed ash borer, clear wing borer, uh, lilac borer, those all will come into ash trees, but they never came into the tree unless it was weak in their stress. Remember, the ash borer didn't care. It just came into the tree if it was an ash destruction. Wow. Um, the dams, it was built on a lake. This was built back in like the 40s. Um, does the ODNR know that there's there? Uh, a lot of it depends on the heights. I know that that was an issue under the Kasich administration. They were more concerned about that dams and dikes. And, um, I only had one landowner in Lorraine County that it wasn't so much the dike. Well, it was the dike. The guy built this big pond back in the, it wasn't even the landowner, but he owned it. Um, there was a creek that ran right beside it. Mm -hmm. And then they put a Walmart upstream. Mm -hmm. Well, all that water coming off that development basically cut that creek and it just dropped. So then it couldn't get out into the floodplain when it really mm -hmm. rained. Yeah. So that thing didn't go straight. So it started pounding the, the dam. Mm -hmm. And there was a section of the dam was probably, oh, it was only about four feet wide. And it got to the point of, okay, here's 25 oh acres of water <laughs> that this four foot of earth is holding back. Yeah. And it's like, we got to do something here now. I ended up finally, and even the Leonard knew we needed to, he needed to do something, but he brought, we brought in the, uh, oh, the NRCS engineer, and they were trying to figure out what they could do, 
And what they ended up eventually doing was they lowered the water and they moved the, the dam over and rebuilt the dam so it went from a 25 to a 20 acre lake. Oh. Huh. And they basically sacrificed five acres hmm. to, yeah. to walk it away from that creek. Hmm. Hmm. But it was everything was above and beyond what the landowner was doing. He wasn't wow. doing anything wrong. Right, right. But yeah. it was just all the development that came in around it from that standpoint. So yeah. that's your scotch pine cone. Oh, we don't want these. <laughs> We've got Why? some seeds though. Why yeah, don't we it's want scotch. Them? That's scotch. That's the ones we don't if want. You, if you're planting your pine, you, you're better off planting white. Oh, right. Uh, white or red? I would I no, wouldn't even plant red. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because they are they don't live long? Or? Right. Yeah. They stagnate. They, they, if they get together too much, yeah. too, too long, they just sit there. They won't. If they get Other, too close, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Another question, I don't know how much you know about the lakes, but like you can see all the muscles. bought it the water was way down because the okay. holes there and just kind of use the back or the tractor and kind of clear all that muck out does that help at all or don't even bother because it just uh, comes back every year the biggest thing is most of the time when they're doing something like that like muskingum watershed does that like down at charles mill yeah, yeah. And they yeah. lower their water and that but they're doing more of a stream bank erosion prevention work where huh. basically the it's i mean charles mill is what 400 acres or 500 acre lake so there's areas where the waves are just hitting the banks mm -hmm. and then they get undercut so what they did down mm -hmm. there was they lowered it they came in and recontoured it and then they put riprap big rocks oh. up against oh. there to, so to it doesn't armor. damage it yeah, yeah sure. they, did, they it weren't doing it for the muck. the muck most of the time the muck is more Oh, I've seen guys put the aerators in. Yeah, We've got four out here. Right? Yeah, I mean, the, the aerators are better than the, the fountains. Really? I mean, a lot of times oh, people yeah. think, oh, the fountain's going to throw water. It's going to put more oxygen. It doesn't. The aerator, mm. those will help further on that when that lake turns over. Mm. And also, I had one guy over towards Hinkley. He, he, he swore he would put them in, and the muck where he put them in would dissipate. Hmm. And then he'd move it over and it dissipated. Oh, that's interesting. And so I don't know if it was that's worth really or not, but we should be checking that. But that might mm -hmm. be something that you check with like the soil and water office or like a aqueduct or pond. Yeah. We have we takes, have ponds beautiful. Ponds beautiful, ponds beautiful is the name of the company that put these things in. So yeah, you may just ask them about that. I mean, move, you some of them around. basically will run them off of uh, like Solar. a compressor. Some of them run them off windmills. Yeah, we've got a compressor. We would. On there. A windmill would be a good idea. Yeah, had we known how much the lake was when we bought it, we would, it would have been great just to... Some of them I've seen, I was going to say, I've seen two of them in the last couple of years. Ashton County Park District just took one and they basically dewatered it. I mean, they breached the dam, let it go, yeah. and then they got a dozer in there and they were pushing three and four foot of muck oh. off of it. Um, there was another friend of the family that they just did theirs and... Uh, but here again, it's it, you're not rebuilding a pond, but it's next thing to it. Yeah. And heavy equipment and all that kind of stuff. Is but. this guy a candidate for? Uh, yep. Yeah. There's no top up there. Oh, yeah. there's three dead ones right there. Yeah, there's no top on it. That one doesn't. Yeah, there's a dead plus. Wow. But the dead ones themselves aren't doing anything. It's They're the right, ones that are. They could be harboring some of the insects. Oh, That's gotcha, the gotcha, only gotcha, thing. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They're not taking sunlight. They're not taking I gotcha. water. They're not taking. God, there's tons of them. I mean, look at that one right there. Yeah, they could be harboring the insect. And the, and the insect is only active when, or is... Well, your pine borer typically are only going to be when they're the, the cycle aspect. Like right now, they should be bit, pretty much wrapping up everything. Pine borer or yeah. pine beetle? Pine beetle, pine borer. Same thing. Yeah, there are different ones. I mean, There's like... all the pine cones I was talking about. Yeah, and see, they're all open to the point where when you see them open like that, the seed's pretty much out of them. Okay. But, um, so potentially some of these could... Well, could. they probably put seed on the ground already. But here again, it all depends if it falls on bare mineral versus uh, like the thick stuff over there. Thick and stuff's not going to... The seed stays up and it just dries out. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. It's really shallow here. It's only like a foot deep here. And, and it's... Anyway. Yeah, I don't know what those are for. Yeah, yeah. we don't know what those are for. So 
this is one of our little culverts that so they built a uh, silt pond over here yeah and so uh, water's coming from that way into this yeah it's way. coming yeah. through the creek over there yeah. yeah yeah and we this is the first time we shocked the heck out of this and we had a big rain and all the chemicals and everything came into this lake that's right about the time we had that fish kill yeah so weird weather a bunch of ducks back there Mallards or wood ducks. Yeah. Do you recommend putting, like, to keep the erosion going? You know, would you recommend anything on these? On this Typically or? not. No, okay. And then you said the dredging really wouldn't do much. Well, I mean, when you're looking at a backhoe that can reach 9 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, yeah. I mean, on that size of water body, it's not going to really do much. I mean, the only way you're going to have a major impact is to dewater it and basically push, get everything pushed out into a pile, and then yeah. either haul it someplace <laughs> but I here again I don't have a clue on cost of something of that nature how big a backhoe would you rent if you had to <laughs> well I probably, probably yeah, wouldn't even be a backhoe it. it'd probably be a dozer or, or like a big excavator I've seen those big dredging ones where the arm is like 80 feet long so but the biggest thing is, is having a place to put it yeah. right that's right, the other right, thing because right, right, right. I know the one there in Ashland they moved it and put it onto a side hill and then they just spread it out well it was just I mean when they did it it was just like Oh yeah, it's not awful too. Yeah, we've been hearing the horror stories about that. Yeah, so we're coming into Brambleberry Forest. That's a nickname. <laughs> Where all the trees are down. Yeah, you see some here that are. Yep, these are all scotch that are failing. Scotch. I gotta keep saying that to myself. Scotch. These are scotch. These are all failing. Is there any value in ones that look infested to take them out, or not just let it go? Yeah. You'll be hard pressed to find anybody interested in them. Oh, wow. mean, the white pine, you can find some markets for them. Oh. The red pine is a little harder. Now, they're, the only place I could think that m would possibly be interested, if you were looking at taking them all, taking the bulk of them out, would be there is a Berlin Lumber down in Holmes County. Yep, we're familiar with it. They have a shaving mill. Hmm. Where they would basically, instead of making them into boards, they would put them into like animal bedding. Oh, oh wow. And they would basically feed the case chicken barns. Yeah. Like if you've got, farmers got two or three chicken barns, when they swap the chickens out, yeah. they push the litter and the, the old bedding out. They come in with this new bedding and put it down. And back before COVID started, they were going through like 10 semi loads of chips a day and then when covid hit they were down to about one or two truck loads a day wow. and now it's ramped back up so huh. but, like it, but that would be about the only thing i would think they would do with the scotch well i guess one of my questions is those, that looks pretty good that one looks pretty good fairly good that one is, well, that one's that dead, one's dead. Mean, so yeah. does it so to stop dead, stop dead, this so next the, to dead so to stop this like it looks like there's beetles in uh, there i think that one's even dead yeah well i mean is there anything back here to stop the spread not really to stop the this spread. should be a hard okay. sh this wants to be a hardwood stand i mean it's been here again it gets back to if these were planted in the 40s or 50s yeah somebody should have stayed up after them thinning them every 10 12 15 years and i think and keeping the hardwoods out so oh, all these hardwoods are basically sugar maples. Yeah. yeah. There's some elms, uh, some hickories. Yep. But it, it's wanting to convert on its own over to a hardwood stand is what it's trying to do. Mother so, Day. What, so what would you do with it? I'd let it run its course. Yeah. I mean, and, and not the only reason I would out. take the, the pine down is if it's dead. If this is a dedicated trail, could that tree fall across the trail? Could it fall on us while we're sitting here? Yeah. Well, you'll see the one that well, I'm just, you, you'll be scared of when we walk by. So out. that's the stuff that I would probably cut down back here. So I'm less worried about that there. than dead ones on this side because our wind's coming from the west. Yeah. Okay. So over there, those are probably going to go that way. Oh, okay. Kind of how you can see oh, all these I are see, laying down that way. Yeah. And yeah. And just because the way our winds predominantly are from southwest, northwest. Huh. Now, there's a patch of elm throughout there we, we yeah. Neil and I discovered, which is interesting. Are the elm uh, 
living better than they used to or they are still susceptible to the dutch elm disease yeah. um that's that disease is still present it cycles seems about every seven to eight years oh really you'll see some of them die some of them live and yeah, then, i was surprised at the size of some of his elm trees here yeah we can still come across some big ones at times but eventually they'll all die potentially yes that's the biggest problem with elm is you don't know if it's going to be here another year 10 years 20 years so from the aspect of managing it putting resources into it and then it dies next year i just kind of wasted my time and my money yeah where and i used to be hard on elm but i've got a couple amish clients in wayne county and holmes county that they're building furniture out of it yeah and they're telling me they can't get enough of it that's got a unique green. yeah and and i've seen it two ways i've seen it naturally finished and i don't like it personally it looks modernistic it's a light dark light dark pattern in the grain but if you stain that Krosky's furniture down in Ashton County had a dinette set, this big table, six, eight, ten chairs around it. I thought it was a walnut table. I walked over to mm. it and it was beautiful. Wow. About wow. six thousand dollar table. Wow. And here it was American Elm. Huh. Wow. And but they had stained it and that did away with that light, dark, light gotcha. character. But is there any pruning or any like uh, like so there were a lot of them kind of close to not close together, but is there anything that let them run their course. Yeah. Okay, so here's our big, here's our, we call, what do we call this? The leaning giant or something? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't See this big sucker yeah, man? Yeah, yep. Gonna... I'd be more concerned with him than anybody. Yep. I mean, he's here. going so to go that back. Means I should take it down, right? Yeah, and you could take any answer down. You're giving me like, <laughs> he's always a you're like my rubber down. stamp man today. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to scurry through here. Ah. John, where are you at? I live down in Ashland County. My office is down at Mohican State Forest. Uh, and I'm typically only there one day a week, typically. That tree was named Twisted Sister, but then it got taken out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, ash that got twisted, so. Yeah. yeah. Is that a big maple? That's sugar maple there. Yeah. And it's probably hollow where oh. the branches are. Question oh. on Squirrel the... coon going in and out of him. Oh. Question on the tapping uh, for syrup. Okay. How... Where do we stay away from the maples? Like, because you might, we might kill them. Typically, you're you are making a wound when you put that hole in to put the spiral in. Yeah. Okay. And there are some charts out there that will tell you how many you can based on if it's a 12 inch tree, you can put one bag on it. If it's a 16 inch tree, you can put two spirals in. 24 inch tree, you can put. I mean, it gives you an gotcha. idea. But the biggest thing is, is all your maples will run sap. Most of these are sugar, okay, yeah. which is going to produce that little bit extra sweetness. But it's still going to take approximately 48 gallons of sap yeah. Yeah. to make one right. gallon of syrup. The last two years on okay. Sugar. Now, when you're, let's stop here at this one. Yeah, sure, sure. This is a sugar maple here. Now, when you're putting a hole in them, you're typically doing it about four foot off the ground or four and a half feet off the ground okay you're going to drill a hole in there put the spiral in there oh, look how deep it is. typically they're they're only about a half inch deep half inch okay wow half inch but the biggest thing is is it all depends on what you're using as far as your spiral i mean it, it, it there's different sizes okay the some of them have tubing where you hook tubes to them it huh? drops down to the bag or the metal. metal oh yeah if you got the metal spiral, they're probably going to be closer to an inch deep. Got it. Okay, because it all depends on, you basically have to drive that spiral into the point where it makes a good seal yeah, yeah. around yeah. it from the standpoint yeah. of then the sap's going to go into the sure. tube and you sure. go sure. down. But the biggest thing is, is, when you put that hole there, pull it off, next year that hole heals up, yeah. there's still going to be a defect, and it's not really a defect in the wood, but it's in color, it goes brown. Uh -huh. So it's going to be a pie shape. So then you move over here the following year, you put one oh, here. Okay. okay, you're going to have a pie shape. You they said around. usually on the south side or something. What well, it warms up. Yeah, yeah. That side of the tree warms up. Gotcha. But the biggest thing is, is, what I always tell landowners, if you're just going to do it for a couple years, find the bumpiest, lowest quality trees because you're bumpiest, making defects in them. 
Okay, if you got that A grade number one perfect specimen, you really don't want to make that put that oh. defect in. Huh. Uh, I mean, unless it's something that because it risks. Well, because then or you're going to lose bad. that, and it just and you may never sell the tree for timber. But if it goes to timber, better. you're going to yeah, have a pie shaped piece of brown wood out of that real nice looking log. To mature enough to get fruit on them, and I think this. last year he thought it was what about a five year old tree. Is a burl. And so they, basically, where a branch was at one time, and something got in there mm -hmm. and kept the tree um, from healing We took all the saplings out, so the tree just we laid them around it to keep the yeah. animals from it. So yeah. there are a few but guys that look for these. But they'll cut them flush. Um, the grain goes no all fruit over. This year they'll yet. make them into You have to have male and female, and who knows how many we've got of each. Yeah. And some There's of them get valuable. Yeah, that was, that's valuable. That's yeah. a burl. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> that used to be a branch, and something was stopping it from sealing up. Yeah, something so got the, in there. So the tree kept, like, building, building around itself. it. Building yeah. around it. Oh. Yeah. But you, you, can you cut that yeah. off? That big of a one, it's like hard, so a lot of times they'll cut them when they harvest in September. Oh, Or you cut them well, off as they're harvesting you could actually cut that off. Because otherwise, there's a big defect. Yeah, you don't cut that off now. Oh. When you harvest the tree. Right. So, oh. I mean, the biggest thing is, is I've seen, like, ironwood trees, I've seen little burls on those. Yeah. But like I said, it, there's some guys out there will look for them because mm. they want them for, it's a specialty market. They turn them into bowls and different things, different yeah. turnings, oh. yeah. because yeah. the green just goes all over the place. Jeez, yeah. that's crazy. We yeah, we've got ironwood back here. Did you show them your pawpaws? Oh. oh. Those are little pawpaws. Yeah. We took out the somebody somebody else show. planted those. We didn't even know about well, it. Well, they David. couldn't be native. There's native oh, pawpaw okay. in the area. Huh. Yeah. We like took the saplings out so they got more sunlight. Get a little more light and can grow a little bit. We'll see. They didn't I normally them. find them more around the riparian zones with long streams, cricks. Oh, hmm. interesting. Uh, I used to find them over in Huron County all the time on the river bottoms. Oh. And, and you'd find them in the springtime, with, well, late in summer or early summer with the fruit, but they're rock hard. And then, okay, I'm going to come back in September and pick some up. Yeah. Well, by the time you got back there, the coon had already gone. All right, yeah. Raccoons so, Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they didn't see any fruit on these yet. Yeah, these are a little bit small yet. Okay. You get some size to them and maybe get a little light to them, they might take off and take them in. Yeah. yeah. Those might be just naturally. Planted. Yeah, they're natural. Oh. Yeah, I don't think anybody came back here and planted those. How old it would you say It is a native tree. Are. Well, here again, underneath, it's hard to say. I mean, they, those things could be 20, 30 years old, even though because they were underneath oh. everybody. Huh. <laughs> so that big root that was out that we just ran over, not a big deal? Uh, it's it's more of a support rut versus a feeder rut. Oh. So, I mean, you don't want to do any more damage then to them than you have to. But. Gotcha. That's good to know about the supporter thing. So, I guess the other thing was... Yeah. That, David recommended too was um, there's a lot of maple here that we should consider taking out so that like the red oak the red oak can drop their yeah. can drop their seeds and you know but then take the the dropped uh, maple and like drape them across the ground so the deer don't get the seeds of the red oak. Okay. I don't know. I mean, that's... So, he said recommended thinning from below, take the smaller yeah. maple out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one option. I mean, I've seen that work. I've seen it fail. Um, the I mean, biggest thing is, is um, most of your younger maple, if it's got issues with it, you're not hurting yourself at all by doing that. I mean, you got a dime a dozen maple in here. I'd say probably every six, six out of ten trees in here are maple. I know. Boom, boom, maple, maple, maple. I mean, there's a poplar, there's a hickory. We drove past a couple red oak, but it's just like maple, 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 maple. How I big mean, do you, would you transplant? How, how, what, what would be the... I wouldn't even try to transplant maple out of here. No. Yeah. Yeah. Now, because basically what happens is the maples are used to being in the shade, mm. and then you take it to the sun, it's mm. going to get what's called sun scald. Oh. It's basically yeah. used to being in the shade, Maple are so thin bark, then you move it to the sun, it gets a sunburn, the, the, the bark splits, then there's the avenue for insect disease to get into the bottom of that tree. Well, what if you just put it in another shade of place? Oh, it's possible, but the biggest thing is a lot of these understory trees are probably older than what you think they are. 
<laughs> now the maples, they don't put a tap root down. They just kind of go down about 12, 18 inches and spread out. Where like an oak, a hickory, a walnut, they put a tap root down about four or five foot deep and then lateral roots come off of that. Oh, okay. So that's why the, those are harder to transplant. Ah. Uh. Yeah, see, and that's on a little maple. So to promote or to kind of balance this out, is there anything tactically you'd say, hey, I should go every year, just do something, 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 or whatever? Well, the biggest thing is, is back here, we haven't seen much in the way of grapevine. We haven't seen much in the way of invasives. So when you look, well, mention it, right there's one. That one with the red berries yeah, is Japanese yeah. barberry. The, uh, we're seeing more and more of them. It's actually a landscape plant. You can go yeah. to Home Depot or Lowe's and There's still buy the like stupid thing. The the They're I'm blaming there. that plant on the tick population problem. <laughs> oh, wow. Huh. There is a little white-footed mouse that's associated with the barberry, huh. which is the kind of the starting cycle of the tick, which then you get oh. some of I've got a guy that's got five acres of that down in Holmes County, and he's like, I don't want to get rid of it. This is where my deer huh. bed. Uh, and it's like, dude, this is not supposed to be here. But that's why I told him. Taken out? Yeah. And, and if you got oh, half a dozen okay. bushes like that, you can just take a, a heavy hoe or a mattock and just dig them out, grub them out by hand. Okay. I mean, Roundup's very effective on them. If you happen to be back here with a tent of gallon of a spray, you can spray the foliage, and it's very effective on it. But uh, I would probably just grub them out with a heavy hoe or a mattock. So, well, just to throw out there another thought, well, this is something else David said, is you, you can see through, you can see end to end here, where yep. there's not, so the deer are There's like, no understory. So the understory, is that a big concern? The biggest thing with the understory is there's no cover, there's very little food source here. Cover for? For animal, for animal wildlife. Oh, okay, got, got, got. I mean, thinking of a deer, and here again, I'm, some people are deer hunters, some people aren't. But thinking of if you're a deer hunter and you're coming back here to hunt deer, you're walking in there, they see you coming, they're walking out here, and man, I never see any deer in my woods. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens in half the time. Uh, not saying you gotta do stuff just for them, but it all depends on your objectives and your. Well, we don't really care about. But the biggest hunting. thing we're not, is, we're not hunters. And then uh, from the aspect of thinking of like a turkey. If she's walking through here looking for a spot to lay, in, yeah. lay eggs, you got the hard stuff, the, the logs and some of that debris around, but there's really nothing there to kind of, like a rose bush or herbaceous stuff that she can kind of get down in and cover. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So there's a big flock of um, turkeys that run around, wow, but turkeys. I noticed they spend more time in that little strip of woods over there in the summer, and that's probably why. And it's probably a little bit thicker. Uh, but, and here again, I mean, the biggest thing is I've got some landers that love this site because it looks more like a park. I got some landers, man, I don't want to see any of this stuff on the ground. I want to get rid of it. Mm. I mean, in a real woods, you're going to have some woody debris on the ground. Okay, but I'm yeah, dragging that. Here. Branch. Do you think this is above average? Uh, laying the, the the amount of trees laying the amount of material on the ground it's on the heavier side i mean i'm not saying it's the worst it's definitely not the least but it's i mean you got the dead tops i mean this is top debris here somebody's dropped that stuff or unless it was dead tree that somebody cut some stuff out of like firewood out of yeah this one I mean, dropped. That this one's been oh, cut one. this one dro i cut that okay. because it had already dropped and you can see yep. the towards the base there so the biggest thing is, is a lot of this stuff that's laying on the ground is to the point where it's hard to do much with it. Yeah. And the only way really to get it to go away quicker is to buck it up into smaller pieces yeah. to get it down in contact yeah. with the ground. Right. Anything right. that's up in the air is right. going to dry out and fungal right. activity can't really work on it as fast. Right, right, right. Huh. But I mean, we, I bet anything this woods was either... I mean, here again, before your time of owning it, even if it's in the family's time, I bet this was pastured at some point. 
Hmm. They add livestock in. Because really, when you look at it, wow. you have a few, a handful, wow, you got trees that are big like that red oak, yeah. and then you got a lot of trees like this. Yeah. So yeah. there's age groups that are missing. So huh. something had kept them out. Either they were chewed on by livestock, huh. or they did a heavy harvest, those didn't go, and everything else has come in since the heavy harvest was conducted. So oh, you okay. have almost what looks to be like a two-tiered stand. You either got big guys or smaller guys. Huh. There's nothing in between. And when you say harvest, you mean like took the timber, cut the timber oh, out of here. Cut the timber out of here. Yeah, I wow. mean I'm not seeing much in the way of stumps, so it's not been within the last 25 years. I see. I see. It may have been 50 years ago they cut it to everything this big and bigger, taken I see. out. I see. Like yeah, what would you stuff? do with this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of that just don't have. You can see how it's all rotten. Yeah. I mean, John, I dug an eight foot by six foot hole there and, and dropped half of those things in there. into it. Yeah. And then I mean, it covered it up. The biggest thing, there are some companies out there that will shred this stuff, but it all costs money. And here again, anything up in a pile, you can kind of see how it's rotten on the edges, but you put a saw to that, it's going to be hard, solid in the middle. To spread it, spread it out so it can yeah. hit the ground. Yeah, oh. yeah, because because some of it's stacked against trees. If you yeah, I get it away from the tree, don't you? Yeah, I mean it's the trees are. It's not the best thing for it to be up against the tree, but it's as long as it's not opening the bark up, it shouldn't be hurting it. Mm -hmm. But if the trees sway in and all of a sudden it knocks some bark off, then it becomes mm -hmm. a wound for the tree that it's got to heal up now. So, is there any pruning or anything that you would recommend back here, like maples or anything? I mean, the only thing, like, it, it needs more light to the ground. I mean, that's one thing that, because here again, it's wide open. I mean, once the leaves come off these, I bet you can stand on the front part of, up here by your drive, and you can see the people that are back here behind you. Y'all can see their TV, this big screen TV. I mean, yeah. from that standpoint, it's that wide open, okay? yeah. and there's just not yeah. much in the way of vegetation underneath. I mean, you're not even seeing any little maples. I mean, you got a few little ash here and there. And I think that's where Dave's coming from with take out either the understory trees to try to get new stuff to come in to replace those. But personally, I have not seen that work a lot. We've got one section down at Mohican they did that with. They took out 10 inches and bigger, or no, 10 inches and smaller uh, out of the understory. 10 inch wide. 10 inch diameter tree mm. oh. and smaller. Okay? okay, so they had mature like these big red oaks and they were trying to basically get the oak to regenerate like gotcha. what Dave's recommending. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Okay, well, I think they did it through a firewood harvest, so 10 inches and all that material came out with mm -hmm. a fire for firewood. So anything that regenerated, the deer ate. And that's why he's saying lay it down mm -hmm. so as the stuff right, grows right, up, right, 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 they've right. got to dig or yeah. here's their trail, they'll hit the tree that's on the trail, but they're not gonna go yeah. 20 yards that yeah. way to find trees because they've got to step over all this stuff or right. that kind of thing. So, wow. uh, but I personally, I don't think that's going to do a whole lot. I mean, there's, it, it wants to be a maple woods. I mean, that's where it's at. It wants yeah. to be a maple woods. You can slow it down a little bit by thinning around some of the oaks and trying to encourage them. But when you're looking at two and three foot diameter red oak, you don't really want to, I mean, they're the dominant tree already. They're yeah, above yeah. everybody, so it doesn't need thin for. Mm -hmm. When you run into oaks this size that are the same size as these guys, uh -huh. that's where I would be thinning for some of those. Even if I got to cut a couple good maples, I've got six, seven maple out of 10 trees. Hey, I got an oak. I'm going to make sure I do whatever I can to help that oak. And you would do it more towards where the path of a deer is not so... Well, I wouldn't even worry about the deer at that point. I would just be worrying about that oak tree so he's got room to expand that top mm. to make that factory bigger. Oh, okay. 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 So that would be more of what we would call kind of like a crop tree release. You find that oak tree, okay, who's the same height or above him? Okay, oh. if it's a maple tree down here and the oak tree's up here, yeah, this oak tree's getting all the light he wants. Right, but it's but not regenerating. But if it's the other way around, but it's not and it's not regenerating, but even at that, I think you would have a hard time getting this stand to regenerate the oak. Uh -huh. I, I mean, uh -huh. unless you cut it to the point of removing half these trees in here or more. He was talking wow. about selectively, like if there's a big oak, do a, like a 50-foot radius around it or... Uh, 
it's on the south side of it, like a mm -hmm. opening up a section. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. The problem Isn't I would I, the problem about? I yeah. would see happening there is you're taking that oak and you're exposing it to full light. Oaks have a tendency to do what is called epicormic branch. And the new light's hitting lower in the log. Mm. That tree feels that and says, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, hey, I can make food here. And it sends out a new branch. Mm -hmm. Well, you took that nice log and then just had it basically put a knot there hmm. from that point on. So hmm. now the other way around, if you do that on the north side, you'll the light won't hit that lower part of the log. And from that standpoint, that log won't warm up and then encourage that sprouting. So you could do what you're talking about on the hmm. north side. But I wouldn't do it on the south side uh, from that standpoint. Whoa. Yeah. But a, so a log like maybe that it was down, yeah. no, it was in the south probably side. probably take 25 years for that to be done. Oh, I mean, if you go out there and kick it right now, it'll break apart. But I bet it's still solid. I mean, yeah. I mean Neil, I remember him saying on this side of that oak. So this is the north side. I know. No, I, he said south. I remember it. Well, I, I, south I remember. facing sun. Yeah. See, I mean, and that gets, why. I mean, and here again, you'll get multiple foresters in one woods, and each one of them will come up with a little bit of a different recommendation. Right, sure. I mean, the biggest thing is, is I'm always afraid of taking, and here again, it's, it's, it could be a mute point. If you're thinking, hey, Pat, we're never going to sell timber out of here, well, then it's, it's a mute point. But you take a log, a couple, like those bigger red oaks back there, and I'm just throwing a number out. Say that's a two or $3,000 tree. And then all of a sudden, I do something that then it sprouts out branches. Mm -hmm. I just turned that tree into maybe a four hundred dollar tree, hmm. wow. okay? Because those are now going to be defects in any of the right. wood that right. comes right. out of that tree right. if it would be yeah, sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything there's winners, there's losers. I mean, if you thin it, some some animals like it being thick like this. Some animals don't want it being thick like this. Mm -hmm. So there's winners Raccoons and losers all the way around. Raccoons love this. But the biggest thing is, is I mean, you got a thousand of these guys to the acre. They're here to replace the big guys eventually. Mm -hmm. So I don't get too concerned unless I don't have these in here. But I can understand why he's trying to get it to the point of regenerating. And I don't think whatever you do personally, unless there's advanced regeneration there now, you're not going to get it to regenerate. So There's, he never put that in his report, did he? I mean, he did, but he did. it wasn't like, okay, you got to do this is, much. Thinking of that tree, that acorn's yeah. that big. How far is that seed going to go from the parent tree? If nothing moves it. I mean, it's going to hit the ground maybe about 30 feet. Okay, maple's got the helicopter. Mm. With the wind, it can go 300 feet from the huh. tree. Oh, wow, okay. I didn't know that either. I mean, and I'm just throwing a number out. Six out of ten, seven out of ten trees in here are maple. They're polluting the site a whole lot more with seed than those oaks. Yeah. Yep. So Good that's point. why I say you can do stuff out here to encourage the oak. What I think would probably come in would be more maple. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you might get that one oak and then you get 20 maple to come around it. And then that, okay, now I got to thin for this mate or thin for this oak. Otherwise, the maple are just going to choke the, the oak out. He didn't mention what you mentioned about the, the, when you harvest the 2,000 versus 500 for a tree. Well, I mean, that's just a number. I'm no, no, but, but that's... that's you're going to de degrade that log if it happens to do that. Well, that's important, right. Branch. Yeah, that's important. I mean, but... Well, uh, I mean, if, 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 if this wasn't recreation ground, your trails, and it was just primarily woods, you're pro what I would probably recommend would be to come in and harvest out some of the maple, a few of the oak, walk away from it and let mother nature have it for five mm. to ten years how big are the maples would you get uh most of these that are showing signs of problems where they're bumpy or looks like there's some holes in the top i mean that's maples mm. this size is big we you got a, a lot of 16 you got a lot that size that's come in after these all yeah. came in underneath the big guys huh. wow but we had a guy come out um, last spring, I think, or maybe even before that, to quote doing a, um, taking some timber, and I think he said he'd take like 20, or 60 trees. He had some red pine, he had the red oaks, and um, probably some of the maples, and he's, it was only like $4,000. Yeah, there's more than that here. And, I, and I'm surprised he won the red pine. Uh, but the red oak, I could see everybody wanting. Um, Hmm. At one time, back, well, I mean, it goes back to when Trump was still in office. 
Remember when he was fighting with China and the tariffs and all that? The red oak market was in the tank at that point. Mm. Uh, basically, it got to the point where we were putting tariffs on stuff, they were putting tariffs on stuff. So they put tariff on all our wood with the exception of walnut. Yeah. <laughs> so they were still importing wow. walnut, but it got to the point where it was too expensive to import red oak. Huh. So mm. probably a third of the red oak goes to China. Oh. And once mm. they stop buying, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like, okay, yeah. they don't just shut the, the faucet off, it keeps running. And all of a sudden, we got to stop buying because nobody's buying what's going out the mill. And so the price just dropped. I mean, it was bringing, right now, Red Oak's bringing probably a dollar a foot for grade lumber that's going to go into flooring, furniture. Hmm. Um, hmm. Back then, you were lucky if you got 30 cents. Mm. Wow. So, I mean, at that wow. point, I'm telling landers, don't even bother cutting them. Leave them yeah. stand there, let them grow. That market's going to come back. How long do you think that market's going to take? Back, to that back? market's back already. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, but that was back. When, as soon as they settled that tariff dispute, yeah, 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 yeah. They dropped the tariffs. It was within six months. The markets were right back to where they were huh. before. <laughs> the only one I don't understand, wild cherry right now, black cherry. That market keeps dropping, dropping, and dropping. And I don't know why that one's dropping, but you don't really have any cherry in here. Because it's not really that cher cherry wood's not as as trendy i guess right yeah right now yeah. sugar maple's hot oaks hot, red oak white oak in particular is hot walnut but here again i mean the way it is right now i mean there's things back here you could do to clean it up a little bit just by bucking this stuff up getting it down i mean that's solid as when it fell down uh but you can see where when they're in contact with the ground they rot away a little quicker yeah but uh but these you don't do i mean they're on the ground they're not so, hurting anything so, so no. th these are okay as is yeah they're not hurting anything but the ones that even like that one over there that's well, kind of like, like look at that ice wall that whole ice yeah, wall is yeah. up off the ground till the top and the bottom right yeah. so i mean if you had somebody that did cut firewood in the family hey come back and cut some firewood take some of this stuff out yeah if you, but, there's a few of us but yeah <laughs> i wouldn't just let everybody and anybody in here i, I would just from the liability aspect of somebody running the salt. Yeah. But a lot of this stuff that's on the ground, as soon as you put your salt to it, it's like, oh, this is too far gone. I'm not going to bother with yep. this. And then you go to something like that, and, and it might be a little soft on that outer half inch or so, but as soon as you get past that sapwood, it's going to be solid as it was if, mm. if it was standing. Mm. So, and nowadays with some of these landowners that I've worked with have the outdoor wood burners, they can run all this stuff through it. Yeah, it's really? basically a boiler is what it is. It's an outdoor wood burner, and you just, everything and anything through it. An and it's just heating water is what it's heating. Heating water? Wow. Oh. For what? For like heating a house or heating a building. Oh, the exterior. The exterior are wood oh, burners. Yeah. They, they're like those little, look like little dog houses is what they are. Yeah. And then they're hooked to like a, a, a heat exchanger in the house. So the wood burner and all the debris outside the fire's outside of the house, but then they pump the hot water into the house, and then the heat exchanger pulls the heat out, heats the house, yeah. and from that standpoint. Now those things aren't cheap. Those are 10 to 20 grand for yeah. putting those things in. Yeah. Um, but I don't understand why they're that expensive. Well, that's just like the geothermal thing, because we were talking about doing that with the, the well, yeah, well geothermal, water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's you're using the Earth's only. heat uh, right. Four feet down, it's 52 or 55 degrees right. constantly year right. round. I mean, we've got family friends. She's got hers coils are running into her pond. I mean, so yeah, but a, it's it's not as efficient as the ground. Mm -hmm. but she didn't want to drill well yeah. or tear the yard up running yeah. the lines back and forth. Yeah. So they pretty much just ran the lines underground to the pond, and wow. her coils are out in the middle of the pond, huh. and. Uh, so, so you could use this kind of wood you're saying. Yeah, they run in just about wow. everything and anything. Isn't that amazing? Because all that material is outside. Now, inside, you wouldn't want to drag your no, stuff into no, a, like no. an add-on or a no, fireplace because no. there's insects. There's all the debris, the dirt, sure. all that stuff going in. But Wow. So we've got one at the office that we had free gas for. Uh, we just lost the well. They, they came in, Columbia Gas came in and capped our well. Uh we lost our free gas so they put one in and i want to say it was like 18 grand but they plumbed the saw shop the long or the service center and then they plumbed there's three different buildings that wood burners heat and 
Wow. And uh, but they go through they go through the wood. Yeah. I mean, from that standpoint. But here again, you got four thousand acres. You got plenty of firewood. Yeah. As far as down yeah. there at the office. So. Yeah. But um, we yeah. lost our gas too because it was. Well, the, the developer that bought this place and only had it for eight months was going to build build here, and the farmer owns the gas well, mm. and he cut it, cut it off because he was bartering with this guy <laughs> before with the land. So yeah. No, he was happy with the guy who bought it in between. Oh my God, they were. We're going to put thirty six houses. Down. The whole oh, wow. The whole neighbor showed, showed up in the up. county <laughs> like when they wanted to do this, and they're like, "You're not going to," you know, like all this rip rap coming in. Like, <laughs> You can't do this because of this. And he just threw in the towel. You know, he just threw in the Sometimes towel. Sometimes it's easy to do that to spend the money and fighting it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we want to... you want to go back there at all? Yeah, I guess we can. I've been trying to get everything, uh, get the water flowing correctly through here. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Yeah. Is there a culvert in there? I've got a culvert on that one, and then there's a. I built a bridge over there. Yeah, why don't we check that out first? Hear that squeaking? You hear the squeaking? I didn't hear it. We need your help on where to grease that or something. So it's very sloppy, but. Instead of having to walk around the way. So I just keep stacking it with yeah. clay, stacking it with clay, and there's a culvert here. And it does flow. Not great, but it does. Yeah, Depending on the size of the... And... The other thing that you may want to do is kind of figure out what the watershed is. Because mm. it looks like it's only about mm. a four-inch pipe. Yeah, I know. Okay, so any debris gets in front of that, it's going to stop it. Yeah. Okay, and then if you got a two- or three-inch rain event going on, and say there's a acre watershed or is there yeah. 50 acres of watershed above it, all that water eventually is going to come down through here. We've got two four-inch ones there, okay. just because that's all they had at Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've been trying, the water comes down through here and I get it pushing it through yeah. there and then here was another big wet spot that I eventually just said, you know what, I'm going to dig this out and make a bridge. So I made a bridge. Sassafras? <clears throat> that was your first trip over the bridge. Yeah, that's was good. <laughs> Rubbing on his tree over there. <laughs> yeah, we had. Yeah, he was well. taking a bath. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. So this was just amazing back here. But look at how close these trees are. Yeah, like, that's the one thing that I don't really understand why they got them so close together. But in this guy, somebody used a fence or put a fence here and girdled the damn thing okay, because yeah, it did it that around way. it. Yeah. <clears throat> We see the cows come over here sometimes, kind of cool. Yeah, no, this was, uh, so this gets a lot of rain or a lot of dampness. Doesn't look like the best bridge here. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really done much with it. I, but you it gets you across. Yeah. yeah. I just use wood from back here yeah. and I put some, I split the, the log down the middle, just create a flat surface and then back where we were. But Leanne, you had a question over here? Um, where the little sap, tiny little tree saplings are. That's our only sassafras faithful forest. And it's got all these, it's just like this little stick that goes up in the air with a tiny little bit of Yeah, it pops out of it. Is it worth like trying to save some of those little saplings? Like They're probably all root sprouts. Oh. They're all coming off that, that one tree. See how oh. it tops out of it? 
So did the top break out oh. during the tornado or just? I'm not sure. But the tree basically, when a tree loses its top, there is a hormone exchange going on between the root and the top. Okay, wow. when that top gets severed, the tree's almost like, well, I don't have my factory, I gotta make new. So then it starts sending all these new branches up. Oh my gosh, that's so, so crazy. But I so bet they, anything, these all go back to that tree. Wow. And at this point, I would just let it go the way it is. Sassafras, typically, timber-wise, it's not a very good timber tree. Most guys don't want it. Oh, okay. uh, wildlife, it does make a little bit of a berry that the birds will eat. And so that's, that's about, about it. it. I mean, oh, okay. wow. But it is a native, so it's not like, oh, we got to get rid of it because it's not native. But it is a native. Huh. I mean, sometimes it does a flower, so probably some pollinators hit it in the spring when it's flowering, but... Well, that's what the root, a lot of times they'll dig the root and... Oh, is that the root? Yeah, they'll make tea out of the root. Oh. Yeah, that's the root. That's right. That's right. So I guess we get to go over the bridge again. <laughs> Anything back here, honey? Um, there's some beach. Oh, show that tree that's like all over. Yeah, right there. Uh, smooth gray one's a beach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got some gigantic ones back here. Yeah, there's a couple more over here. Yeah. But stuff like that is the ones that, if you would think about doing a harvest down the road, uh -huh. that's the stuff that really is. Because that defect yeah. is only going to continue to grow and get bigger. Okay. And yeah. there could even be something going on up there where the, it turns. Yeah. Uh huh. But is that the a biggest, maple? What that's a maple. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sugar, big sugar maple. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, it would, would it be a good one to tap? I mean, it's going to still produce sap. I mean, it, it's. Yeah. And that gets into that aspect. You could draw on it until you basically killed it. Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's going downhill fast. Wow. They got rid of the, some structures and put them in the middle there for us. But anyway, yeah, you don't see that very often. Be oh, beach like that are yeah, dead. Yeah, those are beach, beach. Yeah. This is a, a couple trees on the roof, so we had to get a new roof. Yeah, I told him about. Is this a yeah, pig nut hickory? Weird. Yes, that's a hickory pig nut. It's like it's, it's still alive up there. Well, what it is is it, it basically that storm, that's some tornado stuff. It pushed it to the point where basically the fibers in the growth rings just oh. slid on each other, and now they've opened up. Oh. So, so we but really those are the ones that yeah. don't mess with trying to drop that. I mean, that's a professional. I mean, yeah. because you could basically be cutting on this and all of a sudden it just lets go. Yeah. Yeah. Hit you. Oh, well, that's why it's still like that. Oh. Yeah. Because, you know, I said, Neil, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and pull that with my tractor. No, no. Yeah, that one there is professional. How, how do you think they would do it? 
Well, don't, the biggest... tell, don't tell her. Don't tell her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem well, let's see how you do this anyway. The problem Just with curious. it is when you go to try to drop it, well, you it, don't know where the stress it's going is. that way, yeah. but what it's going to do... The back end's going to pop out. Once it starts out. to come, is it going to go straight back, or is it going to come this right, way? Right, is it going to go right, that way? Right. And there's no... If there was another tree right beside it, hey, I can drop it and stand behind this one, and it's not going to get me. It's going to hit that tree. Yeah. That doesn't always high up like that. Whereas, like, this thing, I mean, most likely... It's sad to say it, but what, what they would end up doing is... They would cut it just like a conventional tree and then basically run like hell when it starts to crack. <laughs> I, I mean, it's sad to say that, but that's what they would end up doing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we've had a crew that's going around, well, the last couple of years they haven't done it, but for they were going around cutting all these dead ash trees mm. out of state parks and state golf courses and because um, of the liability of having dead trees above campsites. So mm -hmm. they were going in mm -hmm. about um, probably November clear to february they were working winter huh. less people are in the campgrounds and all that well there were several times they were dropping trees that were just dead ash trees and you're thinking you're going to put it over there and all of a sudden it pops off the stump and mm -hmm. you don't know where it's going mm -hmm. so here again all mm -hmm. you're doing is running hoping you're running the right direction yeah and uh, but the biggest thing is is you could think this whole thing on this side's going to hold and all of a sudden there's enough pressure coming because it's hung up there pushing this way that whole side just snaps and lets go when you were thinking it's going to hold. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with those kind of trees. But yeah, what I was going to... It's not like you're going to basically pull it with a tractor. <laughs> well, no, I mean, what I was going to do... A dozer. <laughs> well, we, do have a do it. we do have a dozer guy over here. He, he might be able to push it with a dozer and push it. So cut like I was telling him to don't touch this thing. Yeah. One side's being held by the hickory, but there's nothing holding that right side other than the crotch on that tree. So you got fulcrum, almost like fulcrum pressure pushing there. You're cutting this, which is going to make you kick that way, and that split is going to go straight up that wall. Right. Then you don't know if it's going to kick this way, kick that way, or go that way. So oh, I wouldn't so, mess with it. So, we're not gonna, <laughs> so yeah, okay. So the scenario, we're not going to mess with it. No, and, I wouldn't. And, and it's it. just gonna fall on its own. That's what you hope happens. I mean, you hear again how many times are people back here on this trail? Yeah. Yeah, if there's a lot of people on this trail, I may expedite the but I'm not cutting it, so I'm getting somebody in here that's experienced to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just if it was break over the house, yeah, for sure. Where oh yeah, it's not going to hit the house or anything. No, but no, but I'm saying right. I don't. You know, we've got a lot of things kind of like this all around. This past, so. Well, I mean, yeah, you get into like that dead one right there. I mean, I've seen where that that tree right there has been dropped. It goes up and crotches. The left side goes up a little further and crotches. Oh. And then all of a sudden it breaks off up there. Oh right. Forty yeah. feet in the air and a branch this big falls down yeah. and hits you while yeah. you're down here working. Right. Oh my gosh. It may not kill you, but it drives you to the ground. Yeah. I mean No, I know what you mean. That's my biggest, And you weren't even thinking that it was gonna be a problem. That are yeah, from you, above. you can't yeah. predict any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean Those you didn't think biggest... it was gonna be a problem. Yeah. Two inch branch, about a foot long, <laughs> falling fifty feet will drive you to the ground. Yeah. Drive you I, to I've even. had stuff hit me with a head hard hat that's what on. i mean even with a hard hat and, and it's like you get a concussion just from yeah, the yeah. impact i mean and, it's, and that's the biggest problem with ash now is that tree's been dead for 10 years or more it gets real brittle after it's been dead for a while and a lot of times i when i was cutting them for firewood i was having them pop off the stump and 
they hadn't gone one way or the other yet, so I started leaving my hinge wood. Pop off real. the stump, what do you mean? Well, when you come in and put your face cut in, you take that watermelon slice out, yeah. and then when you come in from the back side, yeah. you should leave a hinge in there, so as yeah, the tree right, goes right, over, right. it's still attached to the stump. Right. And then it's going where you want it, and eventually and the that stump will hinge has to be just pop. right, too, because if so, you have the hinge off, it's not, it's gonna, it could, like, fall. But I've yeah. had them where I've done that, and then you're coming through, and you're thinking you're leaving plenty of wood, and then all of a sudden it starts to go, but it's not attached to the tree. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, is it going that way? Is it going this yeah. way? It's going in the general direction you want it to go, yeah. but it's not going to hit that post out there or that yeah, thing right, I put right, out there right, to hit. Right. So I ended up started leaving them thicker, and then I started driving them over with sledge and wedge. Then mm. you had to worry about crap falling out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But... Uh, they weren't breaking off the stump as fast with leaving the wood a little bit thicker. This this one here is just kind of in my butt. The leaner one? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that one? I mean, there again, the only thing there you could do is if you had your track to the table, you have to turn away. Put pressure on it one way or the other so you know it can't kick away from you yeah. if you've got the cable and all the weight on this side. It can be a pain for you when they get hung up like that. Um, so when I so when we we'll go through here and cut some of these pines eventually, or whatever, you know, my biggest thing is stumps. I hate stumps, and I've been pulling them out with uh, the tractor, and it some of these just take forever mm -hmm. with that with that backhoe. Is there anything you recommend other than just getting somebody out here and I mean the quickest way is going to have somebody with a stump grinder yeah but I mean I've seen guys where they've drilled holes in them with like a, a cordless drill just yeah and then that holds water right I mean where it expedites the rotting right but I mean short of okay I don't want to see it in six months yeah the only time the only way you're gonna do that is with a stump grinder right um, now some of them there are small ones that are walk behind like you can rent um, mm -hmm. And then basically just grind them flush. I mean, mm -hmm. where you, if you're bringing somebody in to grind stumps, they're typically going to take them down about a foot. Okay. That way you can plant the yard back over them if it's in the yard. Or, I mean, if they're out here in the woods, they're not going to do nothing. No, 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 no. Right. But as far as if they're up here in the yard, they may take them down a little bit further than the average if you were doing it on your own. The scotch pine are harder mm -hmm. than the red pine. The scotch pine seem to go straight down four feet or five feet. And then yeah, if you're trying the, to dig that stump system. up, you're going to have a heck of a time. Where if you're just grinding the surface off. I yeah, mean, and I've done it probably about 20 or 30 times. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, you get a backhoe, you've never had a backhoe before. <laughs> what are you going to do? Find things to dig out, right? Yeah. But no, I mean, I've. but the red pine, their root system goes out more like that. So I can just like munch off some of these big right. branches and then just push it push over. Push it over. Man, yeah. I wouldn't have thought the scotch would have gone down either because pine normally just spreads out. Huh. Yeah, they go down. They they <clears throat> they go down, man. Like, and you'll see a lot of them over here. Like, yeah. So, uh, anyway, so one of the things I did do um, on one of those, I, I said, look, I can't do, that. I can't pull this thing out. I brought it down about two feet at least, maybe three, and just cleaned around it, mm -hmm. and then cut it. Yeah. Other than I mean, the dirt, that's a lot of work, but a little hard on the saw. Well, yeah, yeah, but I know I learned, <clears throat> learned my lesson but, many I mean, times on that. But. Yeah, the biggest thing is it all depends on how much work you want to put into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was in the backyard here, so it was kind of worth it, I guess. Pinterest. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Yep. <laughs> I've seen them. Get it up off the ground. That way it can't rot. Yeah. And the, <clears throat> you know, the little tarps on top without covering the whole thing so they get wind and the sun dries it up. Yeah. It's like balsa wood, that pine. Is, it dries, oh, yeah. You know. Deer ate all the hostas. Deer ate all the hostas? There's no more hostas. Aww. Coffee ground. Lake. 
Coffee, coffee grounds. Yeah. Is that a deer yeah. that you've named? It's, no, I. Or, oh, he uses I've coffee been grounds. Years. No, I mean as far as the hostas. Did the, oh. Because the deer. Well, will, we saw them like out here one time, but every night there's more and more gone. So I, I'm just assuming it's the yeah, deer. Yeah, I was gonna say we've had problems with deer on them. They didn't eat them all year, just in the last two weeks. <laughs> Well, everybody's trying to put on extra weight right now, get oh, ready to go winter. Yeah. <laughs> From that standpoint. <laughs> That's my buckhorn here. Oh, okay. By my yeah. uh, grappler. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you, do you get out by the roots? No, I just munch right through it, man. I just <laughs> it. The biggest thing was that if you Rip break it off, it. it's going to sprout back off the stuff. I mean, which is nothing wrong with it. That, that's why I say, really, you're going to do it. It's going to be a two or three year process. Right, right. If you really want to, and yeah, I'll never spray, say eradicate. Spray in it. You know. I'll never say eradicate. Control yeah. it. Pull it out, then spray it. Well, when you pull it out, you got a bush in there that big, and that can grab a hold and pull it out. But as it's pulling it off, part of the root breaks off, and then you get the, the the top and a lot of the root out. But this one root that's still there, all of a sudden now next spring. Here's a new tree yeah. coming off of that rut. So you're yeah, saying we're spray that. Spray that with yeah, Roundup when if they're lit when they're little. Yeah, we're learning that and I've actually taken out a lot of it where we across the lake where you saw the pine mm -hmm. needles. It's gonna come back up next year, so we need to we'll spray that again next yeah, year. Yeah, and that's where I mean if you've got where you can since you've got your trail system, I don't know if you've got one, but they make them where they mount on the back of a tractor or they sit in the back wet of the and it just the alligator clips or electronic pump. It's just like a 15 to 25 gallon tank of sprayer. Oh. What it is. <laughs> and they've got alligator clips that you hook to the battery. And then like mm. when I've got it's 15 gallons, but it's a 25 foot hose. Yeah. So I can leave this, I've got a gator at home. So I leave the gator set on the path and I can take my hose and go 25 feet that way. Wow spray whatever in between 25 feet that way yeah and we were going after roses small fall roses at my uncle's cabin huh. down in Holmes County and so um, it was just easier than and we'll get backpack the yep. thing. Oh. yeah that's the backpack spray those work where you can't get the vehicle to yeah but if I can get yeah. a vehicle to do it and as soon as I squeeze the handle it's pumping you can hear the pump come on yeah so you don't have to sit there and <laughs> That's what we've been using Whole for the... vegetation uh, control. What's the active ingredient? Glyphosate. 43% uh, gly... Or Mazerpier. So it's like a, an arsenal. A Mazerpier. That's what we use for the knotwood and yeah. stuff. Yeah, this is a little... I mean, the, glyso the, the glyphosate is like Roundup. I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. hearing Roundup because it's in the news about lawsuits and all that. That's all out in California. And oh. it's still, everybody's saying it's still a good chemical to use. All the farmers are still well, using it. Well, you notice, it. like, the Roundup that they sell at certain places, like at Home Depot, it doesn't have the glyphosate or whatever it's called. But you can buy it at the tractor supply with it in there. They'll mm -hmm. do different chemicals. But they don't tell you on the label. They just say Roundup. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one, it's, it's I mean, it's 0.78%, so it's not even a 1%. The mass appear is... Um, it's a type of salt, but it, it's oh. it's one that basically makes it hotter. Oh. I mean, it's what it does. Mm. Makes it uh, what? Hotter. hotter. It'll burn. It's, the chemical itself is hotter for the plant. Huh. Glyphosate. The way glyphosate works, or Roundup works, is it goes into the plant, and it interrupts that food production. Instead of making the oh, what's the technical term? It basically interrupts the food chain. I mean. Instead of putting all your all of its food chains together to make glucose, which then they they can convert over to starch and utilize it, it interrupts that process. So basically, the plant starves hmm. when you're spraying it with hmm. Roundup. Uh, their mass appear basically just makes it like I said. When we say hotter, it just makes it it'll kill quicker, mm -hmm. I and mean, is all it really does, uh, and it'll kill things. You can't really say dead earth, but yeah. I mean, you can spray Roundup and then come back five days later, it still looks like the thing's alive. Yeah. Spray something like this, and in two days it's going to be okay. That thing looks like it's <laughs> oh, really okay. starting to go out. Yeah. I mean, from that standpoint, but that's that's what it is. I mean, will it harm trees? 
Uh, like your hardwood trees, if it's got thicker bark, it won't hurt them. But like a newly planted tree, if you were spraying around it, the bark is so thin, it would kill those trees. Wow. Wow. I mean, the one that you would want to watch, and I didn't see any out here, tulip poplar or we yellow poplar, one. they are very herbicide sensitive. Hmm. So we don't use much chemical around them just because if you're spraying stumps of grapevine or invasives around them, and then that material, certain, like Roundup, is, it binds to the soil and then starts to break down after it's been in the soil for so long. Mm -hmm. There's one that we use, it's called uh, Tordon RTU, it's got a blue dye in it. That one has a residual. So once it kills that plant you spray it on and that root rot starts to rot away, that chemical can then move around a little bit in mm -hmm. the soil. And if that poplar root's coming into that zone mm. and it absorbs some of that chemical, you can have collateral damage. Wow. You can kill poplar when you didn't want to kill it yeah. because it's yeah. herbicide sensitive. Right. There's a poplar over by where the old barn was. Oh, yeah. Just a, there's a big one, but that's the only tree on the whole property. Yeah, yeah like I said, this, this, it wants to be a maple woods is what yeah. it wants to be. I mean, the pine were planted by somebody, I mean, however, 50, 60 years ago. I mean, the scotch is all to the age where they all are just starting to fall apart. It's nothing anybody's done. It's just, that's what happens with them. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. The only ones I would probably try to save would be up here around the house. I mean, from the aspect of getting rid of some of them that don't have much in the way of canopy or they're dead. Okay. Back there, I'd, try, I'd just manage it as a hardwood stand. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the hardwoods have come in and encroached around them so long I mean, the couple that we stopped and looked at, I think the one was alive, but four or five of them right there at that one spot were dead. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, but yeah. if you get a chance, I would suggest that you look up that, um, the old area of photography. Like I said, I don't oh, yeah. have it for this county. Well, I think Otherwise, I'd get can, it. But Google Earth, you can actually Google go back, go back like into the, or something. I don't think it goes back that far. I, I've seen it go back into the 90s. Yeah. But unless somebody else has scanned more than what was... Did you download the Google Earth program or yeah. Google Maps? No, I've got Google Earth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because I've done that before where they've taken and basically, uh, well, like I said, I've got 19, well, the oldest photo I've got is 1950, but I don't have Medina County and I don't uh, have Summit County. Okay. Like if you go to Ashton County, Holmes County, Wayne County, yeah. I've got, it's just whoever the forester was at some point in time lost the damn or when it got transferred from one force to another, it didn't get transferred, wow. and somehow it got lost. Wow. So, but you have it at the library. But the library, Soil and Water Office had them, and and so we had a company come around. Oh, what's it? That they wanted to scan all our old photography, and they weren't going to pay us anything for it, but they were going to scan it and then provide it back to us, so we could utilize it as a digital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Columbus, for whatever reason, they kept going back and forth, going back. Well, finally, they went to the soil and water offices, and they scanned them there. <laughs> so the only one they scanned out of my whole, like Ashton County, I have like an 82 set. And that's the only set I've got in the 80s. So they did scan that one, and I got a copy of that. But I didn't get a copy of the 50 or the 64, because they did somebody else's photos. Uh instead of ours yeah. and if Columbus would have said oh yeah you can do that we would have got and been able to utilize them and I have since done it myself on my scanner mm -hmm. I've got all the ones I've got digitally now mm -hmm. and so a lot of times well I just was out with a guy last week and uh, the one section was original woods but the other 40 acres was old fields hmm. in the 50s there was no trees there and it's like oh yeah these trees have been here here's the photo oh, I mean wow. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, it was yeah, a field. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> I mean, and he's thinking these trees are like this, and it's like, okay, 1950. I mean, that's 70 years ago. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so Medina County, if I were to go out if and get you something, go to the library, do you, do you need something? Well, I mean, but the biggest thing is they're in a book about like that. I yeah, mean, there it's yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, it, most of the time there's probably 80 to 100 photos in the book. Yeah. Because what they wow. did was they would <laughs> line whoever did the photos. Yeah. They would line up on basically flight line one. Yeah. Fly, take a picture, take a picture, oh. take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. And they're all anywhere from about 10,000 to 12,000 feet of elevation. I mean, there's a scale on them. Yeah. One inch is 10,000 feet or whatever the 
So it's not like you're right up on top of it, mm. but uh, and then they would basically say, okay, flight line two, picture, picture, picture. And then the key has got the map, and then you're looking, okay, I'm on such, such road, such, such road, there I'm at. And then you look at what flight line, and I'm on, I need flight. Huh, interesting. And so you, that's how they basically you overlay the relief map in any? These are just like hard copy black yeah, and white yeah, photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could, but you could technically, you could probably. What I've done with the ones before, if it's something drastic, I've just basically put them, clipped them digitally, stuck them in the document that we, when we used to write plans, as, okay, here's 1950, uh -huh. and I just put a red circle around it. Uh -huh. I don't try to draw the boundaries or any, anything okay. of that nature, but I'll put, here's where you were. And most of the time, you could like, okay, here was the fence rail, if this was all field yeah the fence row or the property line lines there yeah, i gotta see but, this this is really but, got my but check the uh, and that's why i say you could check because maybe i mean Do i've you seen a copy it, if i send it to you if you happen to get it yeah okay. i mean because the biggest thing is this could have started off as a like i said i've seen them where they've started off like a, a 10 acre lake and then by yeah. the time 50 years later it's half that size yeah. because they didn't want to dig it out hmm. and they kept the dig it deepest part and redid stuff and now this is a wetland, kind of like yours is yeah. thinner on that side because yeah. all the sediment yeah. that's come into it. Well, um, I think what they said was it was a creek because the bakers dammed it and then dug out the lake because sure. they dug the second. Joe said they dug that lake for him for the swimming in when he was a boy. Yeah, um, but then there was so. a barn here, and then there, the the barn went out to the field, and they had that's where the horses would go mm -hmm. to pasture, and then they used these as horse trails. The bakers bought it back in the 40s. I thought it was in the 20s and they made all this stuff. Um, they no, had the, I think they, they had the barn the here? The they, or not, they had the cabin here? Too. Yeah, with the amount of pine in here, I would have thought I'd have an old case file. But I have no idea who owned it Yeah, the bakers that far put back. it in and they had a little, um, there was a cabin. We heard it was a log cabin, but I don't think it was. Um, right where that clearing is there. Um, there was a little log okay. structure there, and that was built in the 20s. But the guy who was going to develop this whole thing, he took that out and he took out the barn, barn that was across the way. Just kind of, I think that's where you see debris back out there. there. Um, so he was planning on putting 30 to 40 houses back in here. Yeah. Well, I, could, back in the I could see why the neighbors wouldn't have wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But at the same time, you go that way, only what a crow flies a mile or two. Boom, you're in Medina. Yeah, it's so. Close I mean, to so the it's going to. Yep. Hopscotch sure. out here eventually. Don, that yeah. farm has been in the family for over 100 years. Um, and he said at some point if I sell it. So I'm sure that at some point he's going to sell that. Well, that's, I mean, because, I mean, I don't know if you want to call it progress, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I work with a landowner up here by Brunswick, and I happened to drive by it the other day. And he was in our tax program, not the CIUV program, but our, there's another one called Our Force Tax Law. And he was in that for about 10 years. And he calls up, he's like, hey, I want to sell the timber before I sell the property. Hmm. And I'm like, okay. And I knew where, he, I mean, he's right, hmm. Brunswick basically annexed his property in. Because oh. Brunswick was yeah. telling him, you need to do something with this property besides just keep it as wood. Uh -huh. They were hoping he'd develop it, generate more tax revenue for hmm. Brunswick. And, and I'm like, that's bogus. But anyway, but they owned it for another 10 years, yeah. kept it as wood, and then he was going to sell the timber. And then it got to the point where well, the developer didn't want me to sell the timber. <laughs> I'm like, well, then tell him to come up with some more money because yeah. you got 30, 40, whatever amount of wow. worth of timber there. So if he's paying for the property, have him pay for the timber, then just walk away from it. And that's what the guy ended up doing. Oh, and the other day I drove by it, and now dirt's being moved. So it's like, okay, yeah. it's going. Yeah. It finally went, and it's going to, there goes the road getting popped into <laughs> it. And, but it's, I mean, like I said, it was surrounded by businesses on this side, development on this side, development on this side. So you knew only a matter point. of time it was going to go. Yeah. I mean, and, and I don't know if you want to call that progress or not, but it's Is it? it's inevitable when you're that close or that surrounded yeah, by town. Yeah, right. Well, it's so noisy back here anyway because of all these roads. Mm -hmm. but anyway, 50 miles per hour in there. But anyway, um, would you harvest any of this stuff right now? Well, I, that's why I say, I mean, if you're... I can email you Berlin's contact information. They would be the only ones I would think would be interested in possibly the scotch and potentially the red pine. I that when you said that first fellow was interested in it. For some reason I thought it was Troyer, but I don't know if that's right. Let me see if I can find it. But the hardwoods, I mean, 
Well, see, that would be a different avenue. I mean, the hardwoods have more value than what the yeah. scotch and the red's going to be. But then you're kind of taken away from the... Well, and that's why I say, what I would... Yeah, I would call it more of what would be a terminal improvement cut. There's got to be something wrong with the tree. There's the only reason it's getting cut. Hole in the bottom, mm. hole in the top. I half the top you. broke out. I got you. Yeah, I mean, that okay. more okay. Of that's what I was looking cut. for. That's what I would, would really say that should be done, I if gotcha. anything. I got gotcha. you. I mean, because really back here, you don't... Where all the invasives are is here and around the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. and out front. Uh, that's where all the invasives are. You really didn't... I mean, you had a couple barberry. Yeah. I mean, nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and really didn't have much in the way of grapevine in the back that I saw. I got gotcha. you. Uh, but there's some maple back there that have problems. That one that had the hole in the top and yeah, the hole yeah, in the yeah, bottom. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be something. Like I said, it wouldn't be just, okay, we're going to do a harvest. Everything this big is going to go. I wouldn't do that. Right. I wouldn't suggest that. Did I you hear that, just, honey? I would just no. do the... You guys, you, more you don't want to just harvest. Part. It would be more improvement where you've got some, like, say, maples that are... That are the biggest thing is you got to have enough to make it worthwhile for somebody to come in. Oh, I see. I mean, because it costs the same amount of money to come in, and you got to pay somebody to come in and cut it. Yeah. You got to bring equipment in to be able to move it around. Yeah. Bring in the equipment to load it. You got to right. pay somebody to haul it back to the mill. Right. So it's got to cover all those expenses and make something. Mm -hmm. Then they got to pay you for the material as right. far as being the land owner. Right. And if that doesn't get, if what's coming out doesn't cover all that, yeah. They're not going to be in business if they do too many of those. Yeah, from right. that standpoint. I got you. And that's why I say there's got to be enough volume, number of trees <laughs> per acre, however you want to look at it. And I think you've got it back here. I mean, because there's enough maples, big maples that's got problems. I got but all those maples that are like this and smaller, yeah. there's nothing wrong with them. Leave them go. Let them yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you can get I got you. the bigger ones that have issues down without hitting too many of those. Mm -hmm. And a good cutter should be able to do that, mm -hmm. even with the skitter off. And then from there, that they, they can utilize some of the trails that you've got in here, mm -hmm. and then move around and, and or develop them a little bit better mm -hmm. from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not like I said, it's not something you got to do overnight, but it's mm -hmm. just something to think about. Yeah, I mean from that standpoint, and then from the standpoint of CAUV, if you cut some timber, that's the end result for CAUV. But yeah. you're you're eligible yeah. underneath because yeah. of the hay field. Right, right. That's and gotta be. If you didn't right. have that and you were in CAUV under the woodland, then that would even be better because to the auditor's office, they're looking at the timber as the agricultural product. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still will look at this as the agricultural product, but that's what makes it eligible, the hay field. Right. He wants to put in, take the hay out and put corn in next year, and I'm like, I don't think I want that because I just picture it all muddy and it kind of flows into the lake. No, I just go say, which way does the water run off the Right field? into the lake. Yeah. Uh, if you can keep it covered, you'll have less sediment going into the water. Yeah. Keep it covered? What do you mean? As far as hay, keep, keep it covered. Keep it with hay. Because if he, if he would plant corn on that, most likely he would come in and plow it yep. to break that sod layer up, yep. disc it, and then come in and drill mm. the corn. Okay, so then you got all that bare mineral soil. You get a three or four inch rain event, all that's going to go from go there north. down into the pond. Yeah. Got it. So now you want no that's, why I don't want that's, that's, right. my, that's what I was looking yeah, for. And yeah, corn also depletes the. Yep. Of the yeah, soil. corn's gonna pull. If they're gonna either have to hit it with nitrogen heavy, or it, yeah, and then or the following year, too. then they drill in beans, or they do yeah. a rotation of do. corn, beans, wheat, and then throw in. And all of those would be kind of the same result. Well, like the corn, just... the beans would put nitrogen back in the ground because it's a legume. Any plant that produces a legume will has night has nodules on the root that put nitrogen in the soil. Mm -hmm. So that's why they rotate it. Okay. Okay. So mm. the, the corn's very heavy nitrogen user. <laughs> the beans will put it Got back it. in. The wheat is just like growing grass. I mean, it'll put it yeah. in, produce the wheat that will eventually go to flower. But I mean, it's just a cycle that most guys do. Uh, but if, if if he can do hay, and that's what's keeping you eligible under CAUV. Now, if you would all of a sudden say, "I'm not farming it anymore," then we're screwed. You're allowed one year fallow under CAUV, but the second year it's not. Auditor's office could say you're not doing anything, you're out of the program, and then you're subject to a recoupment penalty of three years. Yeah, and that would be the next recourse if you don't want to farm it on fund somebody else and wants to bring it in. That way it's not opened up. But and if you leave it fallow too long, then bushes start growing. Yeah, it'll start to grow trees. Oh, yeah. Bushes and trees. And that 
so. that takes fertility yeah. and so yeah. But the biggest thing is, is if I if because I've got another one over here by it's over by Lodi. I was thinking about planting trees, and um, the guy talked. Well, we planted trees, but he, the land, the farmer was wanting to basically put it in the corn. And here's the pond. Here's the field. It's like, uh, <laughs> and he's like, I don't want chocolate milk. And it's like, that's what you're going to have <laughs> if it's if it's if yeah. it's wild. Huh. And so we ended up planting put trees in. My, so my last question: Would you dredge the lake if it was your lake? I don't know your lake so it's hard to say but if it's been 50 years yeah that one end is all about a foot deep that's what it needs it, it, in it order needs to cleaned to, out to clean out to what basically dewater it shows the all the all the stuff out in order for it to put it what, back to not where become it was because that's what it's trying to do that's what eventually it's going to do mother within nature will basically within the no next. i mean this is like in the next 100 200 300 years if if She'll eventually fill that hole back in yeah. to the point of, okay, instead of being eight feet deep, it's six feet deep, yeah. and it's four feet deep, it's three feet deep. Okay, now it's a wetland instead of a pond, and then over time, mm. eventually, it just goes into, like, down here where it was wet, but it's, mm. you can get through it. I mm. mean, but the biggest thing is, is, I would probably talk, first, I would talk to, like, an excavator, a company that does that stuff. I mean, so crazy. what's it going to cost? cost a lot. How hard is it going to be? Does all this material have to be hauled off the site, or can it be? I mean, yeah. those all add to cost. We, we went through that. Fifty yeah. to eighty thousand. It's got to have. Got to go somewhere. You got to put in these pipes or whatever. That, you know, these the whole tubes. tubes, tubes yeah, tube, your risers. You know, that, and, yeah. Yep. Your overflows. Or, or if the and we asked the the farmer if he wanted it. He if we no. did it, and he said, Nah, I don't want that stuff. So this just. He did say that the guy, he, Joe, who owned this cabin, he did do some of that, and he dumped it out on the field out there, and it was just like slippery, mucky, yep. and so, he, I had so one, Joe did do some of I that. I looked at one property in Huron County probably 15 years ago that they basically just breached a dam, let the water mm -hmm. go, and instead of making it back in the pond, they were going to plant trees on it. Well, I came out, I don't know, maybe two, three months after they did that, there were cracks. The the muck had dried to the point where it looked like yeah. what you would think of. That's like what it looked like when we Mars. bought it. It was cracks. Mar yeah. Yeah. Cracks yeah. were two feet deep in that yeah. muck. Yeah. And I'm like, how the hell are you going to get a tractor through here to plant trees? Yeah. To, as soon yeah. as it rains, is it just going to go no bottom? And you're just going to. And then we never did plant trees yeah. on it. But no. it's, you drive by it now, it's just grass. So I think it's yeah. just whatever they just left it go. I'm with. wondering how long you gotta let it dry to actually get something like that. Yeah. It's it not as long as you think because uh, they did one in Ashton County just a couple years ago. In fact, it was the Ashton County Park District did it. It was the old <laughs> county pond, and uh, they came in, they breached the dike, and by breaching they dug about a four foot spot in it yeah. and they brought it down. I mean, they didn't just uh, and then just let everything go. It was a control release. Yeah, yeah. They dropped it down about three feet of water, mm -hmm. a couple days, and then it got to the point where we went by. What time um, of year was it that they did that? Summertime. Okay. Uh, we went by, and there were a couple guys that my boys know were out there. They were walking around in muck, basically almost to their groin. <laughs> And they were trying to catch the fish, is what they were trying oh, to do. Oh my gosh! And I mean, they were getting these grass carps that were oh, right. three and four feet long. Yeah. And they were catching big bass, and okay. they were basically putting them in tubs, and then they were hauling them down the road to another county pond wow. and dumping them wow. there instead of just letting them die. Right, right. But I mean, when you saw how deep they were in muck, it's like how. To... And then the next time I went by, here's the 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 does are just in there going down in pushing and i'm like how's that thing not gonna sink and yeah, get stuck yeah, yeah, yeah. but he basically went down past just the enough. muck yeah to get the hard clay and just peeled that muck off and and then when they hauled it down the road they, i mean they didn't hold it i mean the pond was here and there's a drive to go up in the field here they spread it out over here on this field but it was just like they throw it into the back of this big truck dump truck right down and they dump it and it was just like oozed out and Oh yeah. yeah, and oh, they yeah. let that dry out. That went all summer, and then they finally came back in with the dozer and then just spread it across that hillside. Oh. Wow! And then replanted it. But, wow. 
But when the dam was leaking, when we bought in, it, it was that low. Like over the winter, it was hard as rocks out there. To stand on it, but yeah. 5,000 pounds on it is oh. a little different. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it was, I, I, when they did that, I'm like, there you go, you know, I'd run a dozer through there. I'd I know. Lose it. But they, I they know. didn't. I'd be really, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. No, I'm not talking. It was only that, that, that pond there is probably, I'm going to say it's probably only an acre, maybe an acre and a half in size. Hmm. I have no idea yeah. what it costs. But I know from a family friend, Steve just did theirs, and that one there is probably closer to the size of yours, maybe just a touch bigger. And uh, I don't know why he did it. He did it the last time when they built it. He put an island in it. Oh. <laughs> and even then, the contractor said, this is going to be a mess down the road. Why put an island in it? Well, he re-put it in when they redid the pond 30 years after they built it. And because over time, they got muskrats into it. Mm. And it got to the point the island just, he lost the island. Yeah. <laughs> From the aspect, if you were standing on shore looking out, you couldn't tell there was an island out there. Now, if you paddle out in a kayak or something, you got yeah, out there, yeah. you're in knee deep water standing on it. Yeah, wow. But they pushed stuff back up on it and built a pond. Because he always had geese on it. That, he wanted it for the geese. Oh. They could go out there and not be bothered and do their business out there and sit on the shore yeah. here. Yeah, and yeah. And like, Okay. And he's like, it lasted 30 years last time, so I'm going to do it again. Wow. Seems so, like a lot of work. For, that's for what geese, I thought. I'm geese, like, like that. So I wanted to put it in, but he did. So, but uh, I'd have to work. So I think the shallow end would probably be something, you know, you drain and then wait for it to dry. And then, but it's the deep end that, that gets a little bit more yeah. interesting. And that's then why you got I say, the fish, because the fish can, you can kind of let the fish. But even like, it's the edges and the shallow end, I'd worry about getting out because that's where you'd walk through it if you're going to train. Oh, if you're going to walk, walk. Yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. walking in a pond, that's normal to have muck in a pond like that. Yeah. It doesn't feel so good on your summer, feet. Don't who, get me in wrong. In the middle, who cares? She so wants a beach. Gonna I'm just going to say, what you're looking yeah, at I is like mean, that'd be fun to have what they did there at Steve's. They just took an area probably the wide width of your garage here and they just put basically, it wasn't pea gravel, gravel, but oh. it was like real coarse sand to small pebbles. And yeah. that's, they just covered that whole section. And then, uh, I mean, you went out far enough, here's all these bluegill beds. Because yeah. they came in and started building their beds in, in the gravel. <laughs> oh, but funny. I mean, from the standpoint of you walking out, you're in basically, it wasn't sand, but it was yeah. like that. Yeah. Where if you went out down around the corner where they didn't do that, you were ankle deep to knee deep in, in muck. Yeah. Did they I mean, put anything on the base, or did they push out any of the stuff? I don't know what they put under that, yeah. but that's where they always, yeah. I mean, we used to catch bluegill in there like that. I mean, they were mm. huge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. saw beds, when the water was and, low, uh, we could see beds in fast uh, somewhere in there. He, he had, got, um, <laughs> they had the Amish come in and do their roof, and the Amish guy asked him about fishing. He's like, yeah, you can go ahead and fish. Well, instead of him just coming, the whole family came Oh, oh no. And he finally had to. He didn't throw him out, but he's like, all right, you guys are taking enough. you got to <laughs> yeah. stop taking it. And so, I mean, I used to take a few. We'd ask. It's like, you care if we take some? And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And that, that year, he's like, don't take anything out. They just took out a couple coolers full. I don't want to take any more. <laughs> and, but bluegill, if you get too many of them, they get stunted. I mean, they'll overpopulate themselves to the point where they won't. They just don't they grow. Don't grow. Hmm. Wow. I mean, so, I mean, I had a landowner that was up in northern part of Ashton County, he had a poor old quarry that wow. there was an eight acre quarry and then there's like a six acre quarry and they had aqueducts come in mm. and they did a survey electrical when they shot them and they come up and they can count oh, and see yeah. what's yeah. there. They did that and he had all his bass were about that big. Oh. And they're like, you gotta take forty thousand of these things out of here. It was an wow. ungodly number. And so he, he said something about doing that. I said, well, I got a couple of boys that love to come fish. <laughs> so he's like, just come. If you don't take them, throw them on the bank. we got to get rid of X number of fish. Huh. And so we did that the first year. We took home, I don't know, 40 or 50 of them like this. Wow. Two or three times. Mm -hmm. The next year he went up, they were two inches bigger. Is that the right? next year he went up, they were two inches. Wow. To the point, he finally sold the property, but the bass were running 14, 16 inches after about four years of doing that. So it worked. I mean, it worked from that standpoint. Yeah. But, but it I mean, was just was amazing thing. when when you would, I mean, it was like throw the lure out and it's like, boom, got one. That's yeah. And they was, were all like that. It that's was how like, it was here. And we had some pretty good ones, but when we had the fish kill back in July, a lot uh, of those died. Yeah. Uh, 
And that, like I said, I bet anything, it's either the combination of when it killed the vegetation, as that rots away, it takes oxygen out of the water. Yeah, because it's decomposing right. and that requires oxygen. And it was oxygen. a real yeah. heavy rain, too. We had probably two to three inches of rain in that storm. And I think that contributed to all the, the water. Pond, and, and the yeah. chemicals came in from the sill pond and then it was shocked it Perfect all. storm. Yeah. You know, just yeah, perfect it, storm. It didn't, yeah, it was a perfect storm problem. So, But um, but the biggest thing is, like back here, like, if, like I said, something to think about. I would just recommend doing it. Okay. If the tree's got some issues with it and it's big enough to harvest, catch it before it goes further and falls down. Yeah. But I mean, it's not something you got to do overnight. Right. right. But um, the spruce or the red pine and the scotch pine, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do with those. I mean, you can help them a little bit, but is that just, a raccoon? That there was palliated woodpecker. Is that right? A that's woodpecker. that woodpecker that's about that big. Oh my god! Right? Looks like a big crow. I don't know why I keep thinking that was a... Wow. Sounded like palliated woodpecker. Okay. So, and you've got some bigger hollow beach back there, so I have been they're probably in the one of those beach. Huh. Yeah, the but raccoons are in the beach. Raccoon. Raccoons will make a little bit of a noise like that, but it sounds, to me, it sounds like palliated woodpecker. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, the coons will use a, a dent. I, I have a thermal thing, and at night I can see them, see the heat inside the okay. beach tree. Coming out the hole? Well, even around the hole, uh -huh. like even below the hole, where it's kind of like they're sitting in there. <laughs> like I can't see a print of them, but I can see the, it's the, just the a, heat. A sense. globe of warmth. A globe, yeah. yeah. Globe the war, the, the, everything the else yellow right and it's red. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> or everything's green and it's red. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, well, I better head down the road. Well, thank you so I much. I think I got yeah, to pick John, up my man. boy from football today. So. Okay. Oh. Well, man, this has been a... Yeah, really, really I'll enormous. send you some my stuff as a follow-up. I'll, I'll email you some stuff as far as... Uh, I don't, Dave may have provided some of it. I mean, we all get the same stuff. Yeah. But just to cover our bases as far as buckthorn stuff, and, and uh, I'll send that stuff to you. And uh, and then, there again, if you got questions or anything, we got each other's email. I'll try to get all those maps. But, uh, but, yeah, if you go to the library, like I said, if you happen to get a copy of it, just send a copy of it. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what. What is it? Where do they call? Like, if I go to the front desk, what do they? Relax? It would just be the McCown Medina County Aerial Photography. Aerial Photography, okay. But it, like I said, it should be dated from about 1950 to yeah. 1964. Is that right? So there should be a 50 and a yeah. 64. They may even. Swan Water Office at one time had one from the 40s, but I, I don't know if Medina. Actually, Caroline, I'm going to call him. I took Caroline out. So I'm dying to see what this looks like here. Mm -hmm. and, um, but oh, yeah, all yeah. you do is that go to resource That's fun. desk and ask for it. Yeah. I know they've got them because I had another forester that went up and got a few of them. I don't know why. He scanned some of them and emailed them to me, but he didn't scan the key. So I got these photos oh, and I have man. no way to yeah, kind of yeah, line yeah, them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And other than you're trying to, okay, what road is that? That's that road, that's that road, so then you got the intersection. But Rick didn't scan the, the key based on what number, photo number and all that. So, what are you doing with Big Helena? I'm going to hang her up. Oh, okay. Howling Helena. Howling Helena. I had that up on my drone. I've been flying around. I had, like, fish wire for flying around like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Like I said, all right, thanks John, for thanks the ride. Thank you. Yep. Really appreciate and if you guys it. got questions or anything, just, like I said, drop me an email or a phone call. Yeah, sure. So thanks I'll be you. around at least another 10 years, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John. Be safe. Right, See you, John. Bye. Try this breaker bar? Huh? Yeah. I, I didn't have any luck. No? Which ones is it? Carolina like this meal? This. Uh, yeah, as long as it's not nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed those are kind of chewed up. Yep, they're chewed up, all right. Yeah, you might have to drill them out. What's that for that? <laughs> Makes me
Leslie Ann giggle every time she hears that. Those eyes are pretty cool. I, never, I forgot about the eyes. Then I had it going down the street and following cars down the street. <laughs> we're like, wow! That's pretty funny. Where do you want this? Just in that toolbox is fine. Whatever, just lay it there. I gotta get a throw of water. Should we stand up the skeleton, Neil? Huh? Should I stand the skeleton up? Which one? I think Diane's coming up for the night. I mean, you guys are coming up, I think. The 23rd? Yeah. The weekend, yeah, Mom, Mom called me today. She's still stewing over the fact that this doctor just went to high school. Did she have a wife? That's that's what these Jews are all are like. You know? oh my I'm God. like, Mom, you're not allowed to say that anymore. She says, It's true. I grew up with them. Oh my God. <laughs> so you haven't heard this from her? No, I haven't heard that one. Was that the guy that you took her to? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's got a um, fog machine here, honey. Oh. 